John Lieberman, what do you have for us from the Howard 100 News? Well, all eyes are on Ronnie the Limo Driver's Twitter account after he claims his account was compromised over the weekend. (laughs) It started when a tweet saying, quote, if I poop a boob, I'm going to feel really thirsty, came from Ronnie's official Twitter account. Ronnie claims he didn't send it. We do know. Ronnie wouldn't even be that witty. (laughs) We do know it came from his official account over the weekend right. while he was out west performing a couple of block party dates. Is it possible somebody took his phone and uh, tweeted from it? It is possible that happened, though he claims he always had the phone in his possession. You're totally oh, here- full of shit. Whoa, whoa. Well, what? <laughs> what is it? Because you're already yelling. You're not even through the door and you're yelling. Yeah, let's hear what you You don't know what say. you're talking about. What? You have no voice, Ronnie? Yeah, it's from all that traveling, man. This fucking wow. guy. I mean, he's he's, yeah. he's got a full uh, appearance schedule, and I said to him, "Is he busy every weekend?" Well, now? he's not only busy every weekend, but he's got to stay up till like two in the morning for these gigs that oh. he's doing. And now he's got no fucking voice. I'm all right. No, you're not. You're sick. Right. I'm not sick. Of course you are. I just don't have a voice. No. And you're sick. No, I'm not sick. All right. What do you want to say about this? I know what happened. Yeah. Now you sound annoying on the air. Why? It's a because different you, voice. Because your voice is annoying. When you're sick. I'm not sick. I, All right, what do you want to say to John? Go ahead. I know what happened. What happened Speak. on your Twitter account? Somebody tweeted through my account. I know who did it, and I know how it happened. Who did it? I can't say. Oh, why? Why, why? why can't you I can't say? say? I can't say. Elephant shit part two here. You Too can't bad. say. Sorry. Wait, Ronnie. Ronnie, how did you find out who did it? Because I know, I know who did it. Oh, it's somebody you know. Yeah, I know who did they it. They didn't hack your account. They, they have your thought, password. At, at first, I thought they hacked my account because I didn't know at the time. I found out yesterday. So it's someone who has your account information. Exactly. So it's either your girlfriend, Stephanie. Who else would have your account information? S- somebody had my information. Was it Stephanie? And somebody put out, it wasn't even, they misspelled it. It was supposed to be, um, instead of poop, pooped, it was supposed to be popped. If I pop a boob, what's what was this? It's something to do with implants or something like that. The quote I don't that know. came out was, it's "If like, I poop a boob, right. I'm going to feel yeah, really it was thirsty." Supposed to be pop the boob, but if you pop- regularly make spelling and grammatical mistakes on your Twitter. Oh, tell so me about it. It's the funniest thing ever. Understood, uh-huh. dude. But so I one would expect that this could come. From I you. Told Why won't you, you say who it was? I told you yesterday. I told Shuli on Saturday when it happened. Who right away? Shuli ran to my room. This happened when we were in, in Portland. Right. I was asleep when this came out, and I had no clue it was on Twitter. Why, why, JD texts me, like, at 6 o'clock at night, which is 9 o'clock here. Explain your thought process. Why won't you tell us who did it? Like, but who cares? Right, exactly. Who but cares? But why won't you say who was tweeting? I can't account- say. Why? I can't. Somebody has your login but, but and password? But tell me why you can't say I, it. I just can't say it. Why? I can't. But why can't you say it? Because I don't want to. How's Why that? don't you want to? Because I don't want to. So fucking retarded. <sighs> I don't want to. Is it because... Um, Was it another girl who you're cheating on your girlfriend with? Stop it. So then what are you fucking yeah, afraid of? I, I'm just... Tr- well, how would you be compromised by telling? I just don't want to... I don't want to tell. Was it your son? <laughs> no. He doesn't I, have I, your Twitter I account. I don't know. I don't know who it was. Somebody you has your password? Maybe. Well, of course they do. Well, do I mean? know. I mean, I could speculate who has your password. You can't speculate Go ahead anything. And speculate. Well, Zena's buddy girl runs a lot of the hot chick of the oh, week. Oh, so it was Zena's buddy girl? No, it wasn't. Sure, it was. No, it wasn't. because she she tweets for you sometimes, doesn't she? No, never. She did one morning when we were here. She did. Yeah, I don't remember that. Was it your daughter-in-law? No. I I just was don't... it Anthony Weiner? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, who was it? I just what? don't understand why you give your password to somebody else. You have 130,000 followers. Me. Listen to me. Yeah. <laughs> I told you I don't want to tell you. Why? Okay. Why? I'm just asking you why. Why? Because you, give... you fucking annoy me. <laughs> why won't you tell them? What I'm is the big fucking them. deal? I don't want to tell them. Why do you give your password You're being to a other douche. people? I don't want to tell them. Why? Because I don't. Why don't you want to tell them? Because I just don't feel like I'm not telling. asking you who did it. I'm saying why it's don't my, you? It's my. Like, why is it so sensitive? Yeah. No, it's my happiness not to tell him. This is like grumpy oh, you're old just men. Not telling yeah, John. You exactly. You can tell Howard. 
I'm not telling him John on the air. Leaving, I won't tell him on the air. I'll tell him off the air, but Done. I won't tell him. Because right away he runs to me with this story yesterday. It's like some big deal. Him and Shuley. It is. It isn't a big deal. It's I interesting. I know it's not a. It's who, not a big who deal. Who tweeted for you? It's not that it's a big deal. We just want to know who tweeted for when you. When dozens of listeners come to us and say, "What the hell's going on with Ronnie's Twitter?" It's a big deal. Yeah, I mean, why That's do you want to hear from? No listeners. Don't you want to clear to it up? Listen, listen. How do you think John it, found it, out about it? He's following your Twitter? How it started? Yeah. Surely started putting it out there Saturday night. Okay, so, so finish the story. You're telling a story. There's nothing to tell. W- who did it? I don't know. I don't know. What are you, why are you being so goddamn weird? I don't know. All right, goodbye. All right, thank you. Goodbye. Wow. Oh, fucking weirdo. Get out of here. And, and don't use this show anymore. And don't use my audience anymore. Get out of here. Don't, don't use this audience for your fucking purposes. Get out of here. You don't know who fucking hacked your account. What are you, a man or a mouse? Fuck you. Right. I can't believe this. I'd rather talk to Benji. <laughs> Dude, how, how annoying. What is that all about? Because you know what? He has no reason for not telling me. No, anyone. I just don't want to. Yeah. Let's stop being interested in his life. We'll watch all his opportunities dry up. And Benji. What do you say? <laughs> Come in here with all clammed up over something stupid like that. I don't get it. Just wasted five minutes of your time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm stupid. I know. Martin, you're on the air in Tacoma. Good morning, King. Good morning. Uh, I was just going to give you a little wrap-up of the uh, Seattle show. Ronnie was on fire there, too. Well, that's um, why he lost his voice. He yells on sta- He yells the entire time on stage. And then he shows up here, and it's got that annoying voice. Yeah! How the hell anyone could make that sound and have a voice is beyond me. <laughs> yeah! I wouldn't even know how to do that. Yeah, he was. He invaded uh, both Shuli and Yucko's set. He commandeered the mic, refused to give it back. Um, but he was... Overall, he was tame compared to Scott. This guy heckled the the first guy that came out on stage. From the stage, he's heckling one of the comedians. Yeah, well, it's Scott the Engineer, Ronnie, Shuli. They want they, you to know they're there. It's their block that's party. That's their block party. They're doing their thing. Yeah, but it was a it was a hell of a great time, and good. I really appreciate it. That's what Ronnie told me. He tells me these block parties are very Everybody successful. Everybody has a good time. Scott, what's the matter? Guy is totally lying. Ronnie didn't interrupt any comedian set, and I wasn't no. heckling anybody. Right. Yeah, that, that's total bullshit. Going, that would almost be too creative for you to heckle. Yeah, really. I, you know me. I, right. I, I just I play sound effects. Scott I says you you're full of shit. Jason, no, you kept telling Jason. Absolutely, you were. Saying, Jason was the first guy out. He said, "Time's up." Oh my God, you suck! And then he. I never attention. ever. Never said that. Pulling him off stage. Never, ever. Well, he says you did it, and it seems to make him happy. Surely, he'll tell you. Did Scott heckle any of the that. comedians? Did it, did anything like that happen? I don't think Scott was heckling the comedians. They're, you know, these guys, they're not professional hosts, let's say. So right. the intros wouldn't be now. the intros wouldn't be like they are huh? at a comedy club. What are you let's talking say. about? Meanwhile, can we? Can I just say something? Yeah. This guy takes Twitter so fucking seriously. Oh, no, no, Howard. It, it Howard. totally ruined his whole this life. This guy, you talk about Twitter, that's all he does. No, Ronnie that's thinks, all, Ronnie we're thinks. In the air, dude, we're riding from, we're riding from Seattle to Portland. He's in the back of the fucking car on the Twitter. Sure. Hey, you should have heard, should heard what was on there. You should have heard what this guy said about last and, night. And pictures, too. Then we get, then we get, we get to the airport. The same so. thing. Oh, you should have heard what this guy said. He was, ra- he was ragging yeah, but Ronnie, on Ronnie, surely makes a point. You're way wrapped up into your Twitter account. I mean, Not like, like, like him. Like, yeah, but you're way wrapped up in it. Right. And you're acting like, like what happened to you was no big deal. It was, first Shuley's, of all, I could just picture you freaking out that somebody uh, hacked uh, into no, your account. No, I wasn't. First, was he, surely? Dude, Howard, I, was, I played an interview. I put oh, together a story yesterday. No, I was he, him to leave me alone. he was. He was so mad. He's like, "Stop! Don't talk to me. I don't want to talk about this." And I go, "Ronnie, if somebody hacked into your account, what what did they accomplish by putting this tweet out? Right. It makes no sense. They hacked into your account, and this is what they do with it." Right. I don't want to talk. He's, I know you're up to something. Howard, I know what you're doing. Oh, he blamed you. Well, all I'm doing on Twitter, by the way, because I'm sitting behind these two in a van heading to the gigs and stuff. So I just take different pictures of them from behind, well, like their heads, is their hair, and I just post them on <laughs> yeah. Twitter. And then people I love them. That. No, no. People love them. I'm gonna follow Shuli. How do I follow you? Shalom you? Shuli on yeah, Twitter. Stupid ass Shuli on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Ronnie fell asleep three times. 
times on the ride oh, from Seattle so to Portland. Right. I downloaded an air horn app on my phone. Yeah. Oh, I woke Jesus. him up three times, and then the fourth time, we slammed on the brakes and started screaming like we were about to crash, and he woke up. <laughs> <laughs> he woke up, called his cocksuckers, and went right back to well, sleep. That's right. The guy's trying to catch a couple of seats. Why do you got to bust the bull? It's a comedy right. tour. That's what yeah. happened. Oh, there yeah. he is sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Is posted, that the picture you tweeted? Oh, I posted about 15 <laughs> pictures. I took a picture of him looking at his phone at yeah. the restaurant, right. and, and somebody tweeted that it looks like their grandfather trying to work a remote control. Like his glasses were up. And he's, like, <laughs> he's trying to read the menu? He's try- no, he's looking at his phone. Oh, <laughs> yeah. He looks like, like, um, like a 2001 when they no, see the guy, monolith. This guy, <laughs> this guy thinks every time, every time you're looking at your phone, right. you're tweeting. I wasn't tweeting. I was actually answering an email. So why are you acting like what the, the John Lieberman story, like it was no big his, deal? Breaking his balls. Yeah, but I mean, well, it, that is a big deal when somebody starts tweeting from your account, It right? was a mistake. Oh, with somebody you know. Who, yeah, who, exactly. Right. right. But you were freaking out, I'm sure. I would be. Look, here, I'll tell you exactly what happened. Okay. I, I was fast asleep right. before the sh- we were going to do the Saturday night show. Right. We got to, we got to Portland. I went to take a nap. I get a text from JD saying, what's this tweet all about? I go, well, what are you talking about? I have no idea what you're talking about. Right. So then I go and I look on Twitter. I don't see anything. Right. Then I go downstairs to the lobby. We're going to leave. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's so fucking stupid. It really is stupid. I go right. downstairs and this one right away with the microphone. The Howard, he's got the big tape job. recorder, <laughs> right. the microphone. He's doing his gig. He's going... So what happened? I go, what are you talking about? He goes, this tweet that went out. I go, I have no idea. It's not me. I was asleep. <laughs> and, he, and he's hammering me and hammering me and hammering me. Well, what do you think? And then he gets the other guy involved, John Tall. He goes, so what do you think, John? Does he think, you know, what, what do you think of this tweet? Oh, it's got to be his because it says it came from his account. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> he says I hammered him. I and asked him right twice. Right. Ronnie loves his Twitter. I asked him twice, what's going on? Yeah. Dude, not right now. Leave me alone, well, dude. Well, right, Ronnie a whole life. Like, remember when he got the offer for his television show because he thinks because of Twitter? Yeah. Yeah. Well, he brings people on stage. He's like, uh, who, hey, you follow me on Twitter? <laughs> and he yells at him. <laughs> Yelling hey, at him. My hot chicken, we're doing a hot chicken a week contest. He, 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 let me tell you something. This yeah. guy has the power. Right. I've never <laughs> seen somebody. Tell him, what, tell him what happened with the guy. With Did you girlfriend. listen to the tape of him at the um, the that porno uh, Oh my god. The porno the convention? The that AVN is. Awards? We Let's sent see Ronnie. what you got, baby! Yeah. Yeah. We let Ronnie yeah. interview the Sing girls. Up. At the AVN Awards, yeah. and he's he's like flirting with them, and uh, no, he's a whole wasn't. your whole character. Dude, I was doing the questions you told me to do. No, I know it's just funny. I got to play that for you. I'm going to play that for you today. Okay. Ronnie at the AVN Awards. I didn't know Ronnie yeah, had gone like to that. the AVN Awards. And it was like Stephanie. It. Okay, it was Stephanie. That's what I thought. Who else would have your Twitter account? Yeah. I mean, and meanwhile, Scott, literally, like you make jokes about this black cloud. It is so real. What do you it mean? It is unbelievable. Like, oh, what you happened? tell him what happened. So I leave it's here correct. work Friday after Jay Thomas show in the morning. Right. And Scott and I are driving to Ronnie's. We get to Scott's car. It's a light drizzle outside. The second keys are put in his hand for his car, a downpour, a monsoon of rain. <laughs> the entire time, there was literally a black cloud following over our head. And, and we get to Ronnie's house. We get in this cab. And I tell Ronnie, he doesn't even know this, but I tell Ronnie that the cab driver doesn't want anybody sitting up front. Right. Just so oh, all three of us, <laughs> just so all three of us will be packed in the back. <laughs> yeah. This is what I got to deal with. Yeah. So all three of us are going to the airport. Constant my rain. hands touching his leg and shit and everything. <laughs> Get to the airport. Scott goes to buy a bottle of water. Wait, at the wait, what shop. about the car? Oh, the car was a piece the of shit. The windshield wipers were flying off the car. The woman couldn't see where she was going. <laughs> and That's, my fault. Scott is. That's my fault. Right. And, and he's super driver. He's like, are you sure you can see out of that side? <laughs> like he's getting involved in her job now. Yeah. We get to the airport. He goes to buy a bottle of water. I'm not lying. Scott. The regist- the- yeah. Scott goes to buy a bottle. The register breaks. <laughs> Stops her. To the- they had to close down the store. They had to close the store. She couldn't ring anybody oh up. Oh, my God. And I tweeted it out, and-, and everybody on my Twitter goes, dude, change your flight right, right now. Right. Do not get on that. Do like- you usually fly with him? This is my first time flying with these guys. Wow. 
Yeah. Did you start to get freaked out that all this shit was happening? Well, I, I got a little nervous. I'm like, dude, this is Scott, really happening. does this happening. go on all the time? No, of course not. I mean, my God, you get in a car, a pouring, the torrential downpour. <laughs> you get in a cab, the cab breaks, the windshield wipers break. You go to the fucking pay for some water, and the fucking cash register closes the whole store down. It's crazy. It's, it's nuts. His mother told him, there's a black cloud over your head. When yeah. he was a little boy, she told him. <laughs> well, <laughs> but we made it to Seattle, fine. It was, yeah, it was well, okay. yeah, yeah. One of my highlights this weekend was the sound check in Seattle that we did. Yeah, and yeah. Scott comes down to make sure that there's stuff that's compatible with his DJ equipment. <laughs> right. And so he tells the sound guy, he says, uh, so uh, where do I plug it at? And the sound guy goes, uh, what are you running off of? And Scott pulls out his cell phone. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> yeah, there's my DJ. And there's, and there's, I put a lot of effort into this. Could, yeah. Then it, he couldn't get his fo- his phone froze up on him. Yeah, yeah phone had to, was breaking. Had to take the battery out and <laughs> reboot the phone. <laughs> my DJ's on the phone with Verizon. Give us a few minutes. <laughs> Can you hear when, me now? <laughs> that, that, so and all you, day long, they just are waiting for me to what prank What would be a them. typical device that a, a DJ or sound guy would use? Not, a, not his a laptop, phone. A laptop. A laptop. Yeah, a laptop. Something. CD player? Right. Turntables? Nobody something? uses CD players anymore. You make enough money, get Nobody a Nobody uses a laptop. phone, Laptops. Scott. How many, well, I mean, what can you do from your phone? I do what I have to do, what everything. I need to do. I do right. everything. I play music. I, I play whatever I need to play. I could do exactly... I have a mixer on the phone. You know what he doesn't do, Howard? He doesn't turn his ringer off on his phone. That's right. I, I called, it called it in, in the, the middle, middle of, of the, the show. show. They were doing a big dance contest on stage. And I thought, I go, I wonder if his phone will work if I call it. I, I'm so bored. The, you know, right. So I call the phone. Sure enough, the music stops, dead stop. Right. And you hear, and he has like the old phone ring. So it's ringing through the PA so system. So professional. Yeah, really. And hey, you want to see it do? A professional DJ? He picks it up. Right. He Hello. answers it. Uh, Hello. Oh, this must be important. Hello. The phone Hello. rang. I had to it could it be something very Im- urgent. <laughs> and I'm, I go, Scott, turn off your ringer, you idiot. And he's turning around yelling at Scott. And it's just chaos. <laughs> what a horrible show. Oh, it's the greatest it's show It's going to be the most unprofessional war it show is, ever. Everybody loved it. Everyone, Everyone loved it. We sold out both Yeah, they love it because you guys are retarded. Well, well, whatever. I mean, come on. That's what we do. We'll yeah. take it. Hey, it's Howard. crazy. Yeah. Uh, and Scott chooses the music, so there's a room full of 30 to 40 year old guys. He chooses Cher. Do you believe in love? Well, why would I do well, that? Ronnie likes that. That's for Ronnie. Hey, fucking, listen up, hey, asshole. Dude, dude, you were the first one to walk up, probably to take a picture with us too. I love you, Ronnie. I really do. I, I I appreciate dinner and everything. This is Ronnie. This is Martin. That guy Martin who almost died coming up to our green room. This oh guy my Martin God. is yeah, like 400 pounds. Oh, the big pounds. guy. Yeah, oh, the, guy, the guy who went to the hamburger place with us? Yeah. yeah. You follow the fat guy to hamburger So place. when you go to one of your shows, it's like the audience becomes part of your family. They go to buy hamburgers with you <laughs> yeah, afterwards. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and, my God. We gave yeah. back to the hotel. You know, you guys remind me of like Hello? country stars because <laughs> the country stars used to let you them come to your house. Like yeah, Dolly they have Parton, that open house thing. Dolly Parton right in her backyard had a fucking Adventureland type setup. We hang out with everyone. Dollywood. <laughs> no. We, what about Ronnie Wood? We hang out with We hang out with everyone. We hang out with everyone. This guy, I've never I, seen a guy, what do you mean? the first one out the door in everything. Right. Every, we land in JFK. We're in the back of the We're plane. We're 26, row 26. Scott's yeah. in the aisle, jacket on, bag on his on his shoulder. He's ready to and get the, out of... And the roll of suitcase and in the, the aisle. And where's he in a rush to get to? Nowhere. Right, Nowhere. he has to wait for you guys. The show ends, everybody goes, where's Scott? Right. Where's it? He's back in his room, relaxing. He goes, we hang out with everybody. You, yeah. ha- you hang out with nobody. <laughs> yeah. Now, who do you hang out with? You go out with Surely, it's everything is a joke, though. You know, right. they take me to a gay bar after the, after the, after the show. I'm glad I missed that. <laughs> Ronnie's drunk. All these fans are in the lobby. He's like, "We're going drinking," and and uh, our promoter Sequoia goes. Listen, I have a gay bar set up. It's around the corner. We're taking him to a gay bar. And like 40 people were in on it. No one said a word. Ronnie, when did you realize it was gay? When I walked in. Some guy banged Some me. Some guy tried to kiss me. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I walked did you guys the, tape that? Dude, oh, had, yeah. We had, we had a, so that could be on our TV? Well, no. Our TV never came. They didn't go? No. They never came dude, to this Portland. one. In Portland? Wow. In Portland? Some guy tried to kiss me at the show. Right. They threw him out of the place. Right, right. All right. Oh, well, that's your sexual power, Ronnie. It goes <laughs> Ronnie. both ways. Yeah, okay. I will you say like, this. He loves meeting guys and girls. He, right. he brought up these girls. He's asking girls to come up on stage to do Hot Chick of the Night. So this one girl stands up. She's like six foot tall, huge tits. And her boyfriend, you can see, he grabs her arm. He's like, hey, don't go up there. And it's not like Ronnie's saying, we're going to give you money. We're gonna get... He just asked for people to come up. The woman keeps going up. The boyfriend stands up right before the stage. He puts his arm on her. He says, if you go up there, I'm fucking leaving. Right. 
He left. This is how powerful he is. She looks at him, she goes, bye, and walks up on stage. And then she took her top off? Well, no, they did she some... She didn't have to, because her top was, like, all... 90% open. She was wow. wearing, she like, a one dinner of those napkin. Tops with, the, like, the hole in the front. <laughs> what a shock that a chick who goes out in a dinner napkin wants attention. And how about the, the, chicks, <laughs> the chicks wanting to sign your boobs? Yeah, there's so chicks what? asking to sign boobs. I was dry, drawing funny faces on her nipples and shit. It was really fun. Wow, Ronnie got power over I women, doesn't he? You. Wait till you hear him at the AVN Awards. You'll see. I'll play that for you later. Uh, all right, boys. We, we got, Let's uh, see what you got. What, what do you have? Yeah. Oh, little Stevens here? Yeah. All right, so, so I'll yeah. take a break, and then we'll go talk We're to We're going to be Stevens. in Harford and Stanford. Ronnie Block. Ronnie won't be. Ronnie won't be. What did be, he just the, say? The, the Ronnie, Ronnie Block party Howard. will be in Hartford and Stanford. See how articulate he is? Wait till he hits the stage. <laughs> He's yeah, really. Even everything. better. So who's going to be at the Ronnie Block party in Hartford? JD is hosting. JD is hosting? JD is filling in for Ronnie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're kidding. Yeah. Hey, everybody else, have a great time. <laughs> he, he didn't want to do it, but I convinced him. You convinced him to do it. Yeah. I've never, He's doing I've never, me a favor. I've never offered somebody this amount of money and seen him so miserable about doing a gig. <laughs> How much does he get paid for that? A lot of He's money, He's getting right? a good amount. He's getting a, a very good A couple of grand? Amount. Yeah. Wow. And he didn't want to do it. No, he's doing it, but I mean, you no, know, he didn't, JD, want he's, he didn't want to do it. That's crazy. He said, as a friend, he'll he's help. He's really me anxious out. about the appearance. That's uh, what I'm hearing. And I told him, I said, dude, you don't have to tell jokes or just be you. Just go up there and be you. And no, are he, you does, freaking he doesn't out? know we got all the plans from afterwards, too. What are you going to do? With them? For other gigs. Oh, I see. Well, uh, we're hey. going to force him to make money. JD, <laughs> I'm not. I understand why you're nervous. I do, too. I mean, you, you don't go up in front of crowds. Yeah, I neither do Ronnie and Scott. But They're Ronnie, d- Ronnie's out, so out of it. He thinks he's got something going on. <laughs> but, yeah, they love it. They they like, they like look to do this. And I'm Scott's the- so money hungry that he knows he has <laughs> nothing going on, but he'll go up there anyway and just stare at the audience. You have no idea. Yeah. Like, I, I, I'm not going to do a hot trick. But JD <laughs> has enough self-awareness to know that he's a he complete fucking... He shouldn't be up there. <laughs> but the problem is, there's a lot of money involved. <laughs> I, I, like, I, like, you know... Do you have any kind of game plan for when you hit the stage in Hartford? I, I mean, there's like a couple little things. I'm not going to do like a stand-up back or anything. What are you going to do? Uh, there's a, a story I, that I've never told about uh, that uh, I'll probably tell. Um, <laughs> home run. Uh, home run. Home run. Good already. Well, home run. It, it invo- uh, forget it. And, uh, <laughs> it involves, exactly. It involves what? It's a road story with Artie. Oh, uh, you're going to tell Artie's yeah, story? Yes. So, well, no, it doesn't have Artie in it, but right. it's... Something about what, maybe when you were in Vegas and, and Artie got you late. No, it's it involves a girl though. But uh. see how uh, the explanation of this story ten minutes eaten up right, right there. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, but you know he's going to hit the stage and he's going to rush through this story because he's going to be Nobody nervous. Nobody will know. What you know, he I said. told yeah. him. I said, look, it's going to sound like this. Uh, I, it was one time. Remember on the air, I said I was going to tell a story. Okay, well, I was with Artie. Uh, 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 we were with Artie in Vegas. And then Artie. And then Artie. And then Shuli. Have a good night. <laughs> you know, I, I'll forget it. Well, this is going to be a horror. Trip, trip, trip your way into oh, oh, So you're going to tell that story. How long is that story? I, I don't know. I mean, Do it like a, Bill Cosby. Let it drone on for hours. I, I'm just, I'm yes, really, I, I'm really. Then dis- I went to the dentist, and the I, dentist was, oh, my God, he's coming at me with a needle. And then I went to karate school. <laughs> <laughs> JT, just get ready for all the pranks, okay? Uh, 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 I'm not okay. going to prank him. It's fun pranking you guys. No, of course not. No, you're not so gonna what are you going to do? You're going to tell that story. Uh, how long does that last? Have you figured out how long that lasts? No, I haven't really done it. I, I sort of just right. wrote it down, you know, okay. a little bit. Yeah. And uh, th- that's really it. Intro people, uh, I- I'm just worried of disappointing because, like, Ronnie's a maniac, and I'm right. afraid people are going to so come. So why do you try to yell like Ronnie? Go, <laughs> I can't. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 I mean, that's about right. it. Right. Yeah. Yeah, let's go fuck some horse. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. Didn't I? I changed my whole routine yeah. this weekend. Right yeah. Right or wrong? No, you did. I got up there. I started telling like black cloud stories or right. all that kind of bullshit. So you were talking like a stand up yeah. more. Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. It's very oh. first. Then I got into my routine a little bit. But, but then when he goes to introduce a comic, he's like, I don't know who this guy is. I think he's funny. I didn't Let's say hear that. Yeah, I swear. Ass. I swear. I'm not lying. You did. That that's, makes a comic feel real good. Oh, yeah. Way it's, to sell it. And jump in that hole I just dug for who you. Who did I say that about? JD, why don't you just recite like Fucking a Chris? Liar. Why don't you recite a, a Chris Rock Jeez. bit? <laughs> I, I thought about that, but no, I, I can't. I'm Do not. That whole thing, you know, books are like kryptonite. <laughs> oh, no, I'm not a stand-up. Books are like kryptonite. Books are like kryptonite. 
Bo- books are like a... Yeah, well, well, <laughs> so you put inside the book. Right, 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 don't find it. Here's another comedian by him. Wow. Hello, Hartford. Oh, oh this is Stanford. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Stanford. <laughs> I told him, I said, don't don't put any pressure on yourself. I'm right. not looking to, for you oh, to eat Too late. Fresh, I already put pressure on myself. But I, said, so. I said, just be a traffic cop up there. Just right. move the show along. Move we got, along. We got plenty that's, of comics. We'll eat up the time, and it'll right. be a good job. Yeah. That's that's all I Tell plan. the story about uh, with Artie. Well, well, I, 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 well, it involves uh, a girl. Uh, but. Uh, a girl. And then, and then girl, a girl. And, and she's, had, she's had big and, teddy. And, and then he called her, and then she came to Rome, and I, I blew my load, and I, I chased her out. <laughs> I, but I didn't I watched, her. I blew I my load on, her, on the sheets. And I watched TV, and then I, 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 I jerked off of my T-shirt, and then I left the T-shirt. And <laughs> you see this? You see this? Yeah. This is how it's it Scott. is at the show. And then Scott just stares. It's like, <laughs> it's like Scott we, contributes nothing. <laughs> we just got a glimpse. What? Do you, it's like Howard. It's like, why does that I'm Scott? just letting the action flow here. I don't want to interrupt anybody. <laughs> you don't want to interrupt the action. No, no, no. This is good stuff. This why would what, I? This is what why would I want to get in the middle of this? Right. It's like Ronnie and a totem pole. So why do you bring Scott? I, I mean, seriously. I'm not supposed to say a lot. I, <laughs> I like play ringing pole. effects. That's what I do. You Scott's like a human totem pole. <laughs> All right, look. You hit it on the head. I got to get ready for little Steve. Yeah, we got to right. stop Thank this. You. JD, you think you'll get laid at the show? There's always a hot chick who's going to want to bang you. Uh, we'll yeah. see. When, when they see you on stage, they're going to see you in a whole different light. <laughs> no, I, we'll uh, see about girls, that. Girls, uh, I'll meet you after the show. <laughs> meet, meet me by the dumpster. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Scott's good though. He is. He's like he's like a, an Indian, well, you, Indian pole. Whatever yeah, they call it. Cigar that. store Indian. Yeah, cigar Scott's store. I like to do got, my impression. He has a um, out to Scott's his <laughs> eye. You, but you said weeks ago when you saw the footage from our TV, you said you're fascinated with him doing nothing. Nothing. He just sta- and, and I'm fascinated. Like when we have a, a problem here at the radio station. Yeah. And then everyone's springing into action, and then Scott just stares. Slow down, Evan. Your trail's Evan. behind. Uh, Evan, uh, you're doing too much. Easy, 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 right. Evan. Easy, 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 easy. You gotta give yourself a heart attack. Shit this weekend. Yeah. Easy. He just stands there, and like I could imagine watching the show and just staring at Scott. I'm staring at him. Right. I, I'm not even focused on what I need to do. I'm just fixated on Scott. Yeah, like, right now we're, we're talking about him behind his back, but he's staring. At him. You wouldn't even know. Right, right. It's you wouldn't fab- even know. Fascinating. <laughs> So, Ronnie, it was just your classic saline boob joke mix-up. That's what the crux of it this It wasn't song my was. joke, stupid ass. How many times do I have to tell in you? General, in general. It wasn't me. In general. It wasn't me, okay? <laughs> I admitted who it was. It okay. wasn't me. So it was you. And during the whole interview, she was texting me, well, why don't you tell him? What's wrong with you? Why don't you tell him? I was just breaking balls, man. I got everybody riled up. How it's yelling at me, telling me, don't use my show anymore. He's yelling at me, why don't you tell me? And it was just your classic saline boob joke mix-up. It wasn't mine. In general. It wasn't mine. All right, as, long, as long as you didn't poop a boob, everything's I okay. Poop, I, didn't, I didn't poop a boob. Yeah. Would you like for Scott to invest in something like a laptop to bring on the road, or do you like the fact that he brings a, a cell phone? It's, I will it's say, added to the comedy. I will say, forget the comedy, I will say that there's no DJ out there today working like my man Scott. Cutting edge. <laughs> yes. It, 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 some Cutting edge say, material, man. It's, it's just it, Nobody does this. Right. I'm the only one. Well, there's a reason why nobody does it, and that's because most DJs can't get phone calls in the middle of their sets right. on their turntables or laptops. I'm a very important person. I need to keep my phone on at all times. So and I love when he has to reboot his phone. He's got to take the battery out and shit. Man. You never right. heard of rebooting a computer either, I guess. I mean, those, yeah, of course. Those but crash it just too. looks funny to take a battery out of a phone. In the middle of a gig to reboot it. It wasn't the middle of a gig. It was before we started. I know, but it was just about it just before the show started, and then this you were panicking. This is what it's like on a flight, in the car, in the van, and they went out. What's that? Why not prepare more? Panic, man. You got to see him. I was this busy bowling. I, I can't. My phone froze, and he's like panicking, and he's ripping the battery out and putting <laughs> it back in, and he's blowing on it like it's a Nintendo game. <laughs> Ronnie, why not bring a laptop? Why is he being, do you think he's being lazy? No, man, that's not my problem. I only host a show. I don't give a shit. <laughs> and that about sums my up. Man, my man is graduated. He Ronnie is in Ange- show business. Angie goes, we're going we're gonna to be there when Eric hosts the show. And he goes, host? He doesn't host. Maybe co-host. I'll yeah. roll his ass right off the stage. Yeah. <laughs> well, now they're interested. <laughs> Ronnie, yeah, yeah, you throw getting back to what we discussed before. Yeah. You came clean. You you fessed up. You said. Well, you, I was breaking Lieberman's balls. But you were you were breaking. Because I saw him get upset, I, and the more he got upset, the more I was breaking his balls, and I wouldn't answer. But then you took it out on me. 
I didn't take anything out on you. You got a little upset with me for asking you. What are you you. talking about? You got a little little testy with me. No, because I was busy. We had a guest coming in. It's more important. Than you? Than joke, you know, joking around. It's more important than what? No, a guest. A guest coming in. But your Twitter account. Remember whose show this is, not yours. (laughs) Howard Stern's show. All right? (laughs) Don't keep walking out at me like that. What? So I missed it though. So Stephanie tweeted it. Stephanie tweeted it <laughs> by mistake. Somehow got in my account, and she was tweeting it. She was in a bar with her friends, and they were talking about implants. Okay. And when a, when a, they were saying something about when a, a boob pops, a saline boob pops in your body, it's kind of like when you're dehydrated, you get the chemicals running through your body. So. When you pop a boob, I don't know what the hell they were talking about, but that's what they were talking about. A bunch of drunken girls, okay? That's how that happened. I'll take because the type, the, t- the typo made me think it was you because you're known for well, your typos. I guess typos. my girlfriend's as stupid as me. No, she's she's articulate from what I can tell. So why, is surpri- that, why is that So articulate? it surprises me that she would have a typo like that. Well, she had a few drinks, you know. That explains. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Our drinks. I'll take my apology now from you. What? <laughs> yeah. I want my apology. Oh, I was all over him that he hacked my account. <laughs> yeah. I had to. I had to swear on my daughter. And to, I still didn't believe him. And he still didn't believe me. Nah. What's that? No, I still didn't believe him. What was after that part? I said I'm sorry. All right. Thank you. Again, sir. Yes, I am. This time under good, good, good. much different circumstances. I yes, I'm going to see my co-worker. How do you feel about that? I'm, I can't tell you how excited I am. Jeez. Cupcake Wednesday to boot, you know. It's a, it's a diabetic dream. It sure is. Wow. How are you? Hey, nice to see good you. Good to see you again. So I'm just going to head into here. Sure. Oh, hi. Nice see you. How, are you? how are you doing? I just, I, I back in. How you doing? So today, are you going to be offering advice? Are you going to be coaching him at all? Or are you I just gonna... think if he wants advice, I can I could school him. <laughs> so today's interview will have a completely different dynamic. You know, I have it's his interview. So if he has any questions, or if he is now that he's on board, I am here and at his uh, beckoning call for whatever information he needs. I'm fascinated, though. I'm fascinated at the fact that. He's spending so much time in, the, like, wardrobe. I just heard him talking about... About John Barbados and yes. the whole deal. Yeah, he's taking this very seriously. He really is. I've been doing it for two years. I don't know what pants I'll be wearing tomorrow. But he's got a whole wardrobe. I kind of don't... That's, but he's, but I'm, I, lo- I love that he's so concerned. Very, he's very professional. I like, guess he makes me feel very unprofessional. Why, you don't plan on wearing any pants at all? There's a desk. Yeah, exactly. I'd be in boxers the whole time. Yeah. Be comfortable. Comfort first. Yes. <laughs> hey, Howie's here. Howie Mandel, my co-judge on America's Got Talent. We have not hooked up on the phone or talked since I announced that I'm a judge. And Howie's been going around doing some interviews, saying some real nice things about me. So we have a lot to talk about. There he is, my co-judge, 
Who ever thought Hello. that? How you ever thought that we would end up on the same TV working show together. working together? It's this weird. Is what, it is weird. Yeah, I'm hi. excited. Are you excited? I'm very excited. I mean, we're only uh, like two weeks away from taping. Two weeks away. Yeah. I'm fascinated. I've been listening to every moment of you. I love the uh, preparation and the, <laughs> the <laughs> thought that you're putting into this. Well, first of all, I notice you have a certain look on the show. I see you wear like kind of a jumpsuit, kind of black thing. A you, jumpsuit. You're a good dresser. A jumpsuit. Do, be I honest. Wear a with jumpsuit. Me. <laughs> it's do, a one piece. <laughs> do you? No. Do you, who dresses you? Stop it. You don't. Katcha. Ka, didn't she call you? Katcha. No, I don't. I didn't get that uh, opportunity. Yeah, Katcha. you did. Who no. called you? Uh, no one. There's what? a wardrobe person. Is Katcha person. from the show? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, they said there's a wardrobe person who I guess when you do the show. And uh, when we're taping in Los Angeles, for example, they want you to wear the same thing both days. Right. So they hold on to your outfit for continuity. Right. And then they, you know, they steam it and stuff, and then they right. leave it for the next day. That I've been told. But I, but I love the detail that you're putting into it, because I had no thought. In fact, I, that's not me something. Me neither. So, yes, but I've got to I don't put believe, thought into I don't believe you. It. Well, if I'm going to be on TV, i got to think about what I'm going to wear. I heard you just saying you were at John Varvatis getting fitted Yes, for... because I don't have Katya. No, you do. Just I do? like I do. She dresses everyone on the show. Here, they oh. actually called me. I didn't know when that. I When I signed on to do the show, they called me and they said, do you know, do you have a look? Is there something you want in particular? <laughs> I and I actually, I, I think you told this story or, or Jason told you this story. Yeah. And, you know, I don't think about wardrobe and I don't think about anything. So I said, you know what? Uh, honestly, I'll be totally honest with you. Um, tunics. <laughs> right. I'm into uh, right, right, tunics right. and kind of a medieval look. They and told then, me this. Did they tell you that? Yeah. And then she goes, "Are you?" And she doesn't know me, and it's right. on the phone. And right. she goes, "Are you serious?" I go, "Yes." You know, with the the advent of medieval times and all that, they're coming so back. So you want and, some chainmail? Yeah, he wanted yeah. Renaissance. Whatever, you know. Yeah. And and I know you're a wardrobe person, and you'll come up with it. But that's and she goes, "You see?" And then it was like just an awkward silence. And then we hung up, and I never. I never, you know, reconnected. Can I tell you, like, 12 of the NBC guys were here. They, it was nice. They flew in. They wanted to know, you know, they, they were kind of briefing me on what goes on on America's Got Talent and discussing promotion and all this. And uh, they, I, I said, gee, what is this wardrobe and blah, blah, blah. And they said, yeah, Howie told them the first year that he wanted Renaissance. <laughs> uh, yeah, I did. And this poor woman went out. Yeah. And literally bought up Renaissance outfits like 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 yes chain mail. Oh my! All this stuff. That's my thing, you yeah, know. Yeah, you love yanking people's chains because the you know the Hoff wore a vest and mine right. was like a <laughs> tunic. Well, you know, I was saying we should come up with an America's Got Talent uniform. But the, here's and that the would thing: take out I don't all the... think about I don't think about anything. You know, I just but you do up... no because but... because you don't show up like this. Yeah, I do. No, he does. He wait, 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 wait. Let's back up. Yeah. Like this? <laughs> what does that mean? But this is look? sort of what you wear on the show. It's 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 a little more uh, dressy, but uh, a little no, but dressier. A, a lot of times I'll wear my own clothes. She's wonderful. She looks at what I wear. And then at the end of the season, I get the boxes of everything they gave me. And wow. right now, I dress out of a box. Right. You take whatever clothing they gave you <laughs> yes. and you wear it. But I well, I'm the same way. But no one offered me Katja. I, I, I promise you, you're offered. So Katja. Ralph, who I use for every day here, he's going to the fact help me. that you use somebody to dress you for radio. Well, well of course, no, we have a TV show I every know, day. I was, and I, he, 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 it's not funny. I know. Now, <laughs> now listen, but you're he, known to, no let, let's let's clear up a bunch of things. Okay, because we're working together. Now. Okay, now it's no longer right. It's a work right. relationship. I know what you're going to say. No, that for, I, well, for, you don't want me to bother you. Yeah. Now look, I know with peers. And it's funny to me that you put a soda machine in front of his door and he couldn't get out of his door and all that. But honestly, if you fuck with me, I'm going to kill you. I don't mean like, like well, beat you up. I mean, I'll kill you. Here's the, my weakness. <laughs> right. Can I tell you what Go my ahead. weakness is? Right. If I hear that you have a weakness right. or that something really irks you, yeah. that's like, it's like water flowing downhill. I, I, but you know, it's kind of a draw because I'm the same way because I will take my hands, put them in shit and cover your whole body with it because you're a germ phobe. I will ruin you. I will go to war with like you. Like I said, you're, I hear you're concerned about lighting. Were you concerned about the lighting and how they I were going to light them, you? I said, listen to me. How I much? pulled the executives in, right? I yeah. said, look, you see this face? You're gonna t I said, who's your audience? They said, women, 35 to 49. I said, well, good choice. I'm choosing me. I'm a real turn on to women. I said, you better take a fucking camera, put it on the moon. And shoot me from there, because you can't get the camera far enough away from this face. Number but you one. know I'm bringing lights to work. Good. Bring lights. No, to 
aim at you. Well, go ahead. <laughs> aim the fucking lights. And I'm bringing germs. <laughs> oh, they're going to rub all over you. You'll be showering for months. <laughs> Here's the beauty. Can I just tell you go something? Ahead. I'm very I excited tell you, to work with that, you. And I'm excited to work with you. Here is the beauty of this show for me. And I think that you should have the same attitude that I have. Go ahead. This is the one job that exists that is not a job. Right. I don't view I, this as a job. You know, people don't know, and I know, that what you do here and you sit and talk, this takes a, a huge team and hours of preparation. And, right. and, and And you work at it, and you know how this conversation is going to flow, and you know where you want to take it and what right. you want to do. And it you're requires the, effort. The beauty of... America's Got Talent and any of these other things. It's not, I can't believe, and I said it, when I got the job, I used right. to sit at home in my underpants on the couch doing exactly what they're paying me to do. Right. You would judge. I don't think about it. Right. I don't think about what they're going to dress me in. I don't think about what I'm going to see. And I am so thrilled to just sit there. Well, they and, told me, yeah. because I said to them, what are the real hours? Because I've been frantic about it. Because Why? I do. Because I get up early. Yeah. And I'm t I get tired because I, I'm used to getting up at 4 in the morning. Like the day we tape, we well, don't start till that. 11. Right. So, you know, it, it, they said some days it's like 11, 12 hours. Yeah. So I said, what's the delay? They said, well, some of it is we have to do setups. But they also said Howie loves being there. And Howie will sit there, and he will, he will, you know, drag this thing out. No, it's a four-hour day, and because I'm there, it's 12? Yes. No, they didn't say that. So listen. They did uh, not say uh, that. Uh, yeah, don't they kind of did. The no, they did. They blamed it on you. Here's the, here's the, right. the actual truth. I'm yeah. going to tell you about the schedule. All right. The schedule is, and I absolutely love it, and I don't know why you would They love said it. you love being there so much that I do. you barely want to go home. I do love right, being there. Right. But I, we, I like let's go home even. at some point and be fresh for the next day. Don't listen. But you know what? If you're tired. I'm going to lock you, you in your dressing room. If you're tired and you can't focus, then right. tell the act. You know, I'll be totally honest with you. It might have been good. Right. I dozed off. Once my adrenaline starts going, mm -hmm. I'm there. Now, I don't know about you, but I, the one thing I do take seriously about this job, right. I really want to find real talent. Hey, and, and do you think my goal Sometimes is different? Sometimes I think you do put through people... You, I thought you were fun. this season. I thought you put through people to uh, for peers to, no, to, to earn no. him. You want to hear my theory? Yeah. And I think we have the same theory, except you don't know until you sit there how it's done. Here is my theory. Okay. I love America's Got Talent because it is so much more than just a singing and dancing competition. I agree. I am tired of singing and dancing, and Me you could too. do that someplace else. I, I agree. Plus, I believe that. And I'm not taking anything away from anybody who is a, is, a, is a phenomenal musical talent. Right. But I would love to see somebody, as you said, somebody else beyond a singer win this contest. Agree. I'd like to see a magician. If you're talking about a true great Vegas act, those guys make a fortune in Vegas. Well, here's the truth. Okay. Let, let me say, it's whoever. You know, a magician for me, I am not a huge fan of magic, but I am a fan of performance. Right. So if somebody figures out a way to do the three tricks that exist. Right. You know, and do it in a new way. Like and, Copperfield was really good at that. He's, right. you know, flouncing around on the stage. Right. Flouncing. Yes. Yes. So, but <laughs> if somebody can flounce with finesse. Exactly. Then we Agreed. put them through. So here's yeah. the thing. Many times there will be a cavalcade of Singer after singer after singer, no better than anybody you see on a cruise or right. in a Ramada Inn. Agreed. And, but they're, but they're, the audience there thinks they're great because they're from the hometown. People think they're great. And then I'll see um, an Eric, the uh, actor. Right. You know? Right. And I will say, and, and somebody like Piers will say, well, that's not a talent. Right. And I'll say, I would rather, I will rather come and listen to Eric. And now that I know that he does accents and right. voices. Right, you would rather listen to Eric <laughs> than some mediocre singer. And the tr truth and it be is told, the, you, it, your whole career... The, but wait a second. It is the Tiny Tim factor. Like if Tiny Tim came on America's Got Talent, Piers would have voted him off. And, and possibly you would have and Sharon would have. But he went on to be a huge star because he was a freak and he was so interesting. But, but Tiny Tim and your whack pack here and, right. you know, it, it, there's so many other but let's characters. be real. What, let's figure out now as judges, because at, at this point it's you and me. Okay. We can outvote Sharon. You're right. going to be okay. a united right. front. Let's unite. Let's decide right now on this show right. what our criteria is going to be, because I think it's confused over there. I think you're overthinking. Are we looking for the next big superstar act that can real like that would take you away from the gambling tables in Vegas that would be as good as Howie Mandel in Vegas someone who would be compelling and great and really sell tickets or are we looking for 
something like a, a freak show, you know. Uh, but let me just say something. A freak show, you know, and this isn't, they're not in the same category, but if you look at what the Blue Man Group was doing, that, you know. The Blue Man Group was a, was a fully realized show. Well, you know, when they started in a little club in a basement here in New York, right. they were, you know, three, four guys who were covered in blue paint and they were bu- they were banging on pipes and, and, you know. So explain to me why you put through those chipmunk looking characters. The funny little people. The funny little people. They uh, were not, well, listen, there was no different than what you'd see in Disneyland. Well, so they put in a costume and they jumped up and down. Okay. You did that to Irk Pierce. That wasn't right. No. Yes. Right. And no. Yes and no. Right. Here's the thing. You can't have yes and no. I, I can have. Both. Okay, go ahead. Okay, yes and no because in that in that particular day, I believe that I would rather bring them forward. If I bring them forward, somebody else doesn't go forward. It fills the spot. I have a better chance of not getting another singer. I believe with those funny little people. Yes. That I could create. I believe I can create. But it's a up Vegas to them to show, create. A Vegas show. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it isn't. You, it's not up to you creating. It's what they've got to present to you on the stage. But you, you realize that our, our um, team there, once they go through the audition process, there's a lot of production people and production value, you know. Right. So if you look, I'll give you, I want to give you a better example. Okay. You hated the guy two years ago. There was this kid that did a kite. That flew yes. A kite. Terrible. Why is that terrible? Because I wouldn't pay 10 cents. Okay, I here's don't the believe criteria. you wouldn't. Here's the criteria. I'm going to ask you this when we're taping the show. Okay. If we dis- disagree on something. Right. I'm going to say to you, hey, Howie, put up your own money and, 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 and bankroll this act. You wouldn't do it. You oh, would not bankroll the kid with the kite. You want to make and a- you're a guy who produces television okay. shows and let you've me, got a big career. Let me tell you something. I, I, I disagree with you. If you take the guy with the kite. Go ahead. And uh, in, in Las Vegas. and okay. this you guy, make him part of a show? No, no, no. Oh. But, well, but he's the headlining show. He, he has these kites, and you have lasers, and you have great music. He didn't have and lasers. You have top, but that's what it could become for a Vegas show. You can't say what it would become. He's got go, a, he should have brought on lasers then. No, but I am more apt to go see this musical kite-flying laser show in Vegas than I would to go see some... Singer. Singer. The guy standing there with a guitar who I have no idea who he is. But are you saying you're going to be biased against people who come to sing? No. No. You're going to, if you see somebody great, you will put them through. Right. Here's what, I was talking to Simon Cowell the other night. We had a 45-minute discussion about this. Right. And he said, you know, take it from the guy who's supposedly the expert at judging. But he said, if you, if you get influenced by the audience sitting there and you put through these mediocre acts... You never get rid of them because America starts to vote for them and they feel sorry for them. You can't. I don't like when they have through. a story. I don't like when when people are voting on a story. The guy who won last year had such a story. He was a car wash guy. Yeah. To me, it was a novelty act. I don't think he should have won. Well, here's the thing. Go ahead. My take on last year and my favorite act was I Illuminate. I agree. But that's who I kept saying. But, I know you did. But by the same token, when you're sitting in the room and you see this guy and when he came out and he was before they put him in suits and everything. <laughs> yeah, and right. I wasn't expecting, you know, this Frank Sinatra, this crooner kind of voice. Right. You know, and I saw that the women liked him. I saw they liked the sound of his voice beyond the story. You know, I, I see why he got as far as he got. And, right. you know, when you look at Michael Bublé and you look at Harry Connick, they've had like big Vegas. See, I can't I can't stand that crap. The but Harry Connick, Michael Bublé. But I'm not asking you if right. you can stand it, and they're not asking you if you can stand it. And I don't think a Vegas can stand it. And Are isn't you, the criteria whether or not the guy could be a big Vegas act? That's the criteria. And you're telling me Michael Bublé can't be a no, big Michael Vegas Michael Bublé act. can. He's done it, but I don't think there's room for 20 Michael Bublés. <laughs> Is there room for one more? Well, I felt it was like such a novelty that a black guy was singing Frank Sinatra, that it was a novelty act. It wasn't really a true great Vegas act. And I met the guy. He's a lovely guy. I'm yeah. glad he won just because he got a bunch of money and he was working in a car wash and now he can support his family. But I want a superstar out of this. We've got to get a superstar. Well, you know, the truth is the, uh, America's Got Talent has launched superstars. We've got the, the ventriloquist guy who supposedly has $100 million. No, but I'm saying even if they didn't win, that exposure. You know, you look at Jackie, Jackie Ivanka. Ivanka. Okay. Um, Who well, else? Uh, well, t- the guy you're talking about is Terry Fader. Okay. Who's got a $100 million contract. What does that, that mean, a $100 million contract? That he gets a... Uh, he, he gets... Uh, if the place is sold out each and every night at full price seating, right. then he would probably stand over five years to make $100 million. Do you think I'll become the guy who's the voice of reason, like sort of like Piers, because you the and leader. Sharon... Yeah, you and Sharon seem to always sort of team up with each other. I don't think that's true. I And do. I think I'm a voice of reason. 
I, well, really I think do. I am. I think you were more the voice of reason the first season, and then the second season, no. you started to vote people in just because you wanted to irk peers. No. That's the impression I got. Well, that, I'm sorry you got that impression. That's not true. I'm, I'm totally honest on that show. I would never, you know, I think it's funny, and I think there is something to be said, and you, you called it the Tiny Tim Factor. There yes. was this guy the year before, Ronith. I don't know if you remember. I just saw him. I just played in New Jersey, and he came yeah. up to... He was a, Oh, yeah, the old Indian, guy. Oh, he's no. an Indian guy right. who was doing impressions. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. I remember that. He <laughs> couldn't do... The, he didn't do... And he said he had the man of 100 voices. And I thought, I could build this guy as a man with 100 voices, each of them sounding exactly the same. But that's a one-joke <laughs> guy. And, and, I, and, and, and you, I thought but you so were crazy what, to put him through. But because he's not. He's a one-joke one joke guy. He would never make a career of his own. Yeah, if he sat on the Howard Stern show and I sat and talked to him and made interesting things with him every day, he could be made into a star, like like Eric the Midget or something. But a guy sustaining that on his own, Eric the Midget can't sustain well, that on his own. Well, let me just tell you. Go ahead. Let me talk to you as a producer. We are going to have we, so many arguments what on if this we, show. <laughs> what if in the context, and you've got to produce it. It's yeah. not just that these guys come to you with no team behind them. Right. If I had this guy who believed that he did characters, what if I, what if I hired a cast of hundreds for the stage? But Howie, that's like saying a comedian comes on and he's shitty, but you say to yourself, boy, if I write him no. this material, he'll be terrific. I mean, you can't. You, you, the guy's got to come on and wow you. You can't say well, you what can't if. you can't compare the comedian. Sure you can. No, I can say. Uh, there was know. a woman on that you had last season who did voices and impressions. She was very good. She did good impressions. I agreed with you. She and had crap material. That's exactly right. And, and I would have said wrong. to her, I would have said, you know what? You run out right now and hire. I'll give you the name of five guys that I know that can write comedy material for you. I would have said that to her. She did it wrong. Right. She could have, but she did have the persona. Had she gone back to the clubs, had she got a writer, she would have gone further. Yes. And there was another comic, J. Chris Newberg, right. who actually went further than any other comic did. Remember, he's the guy that roasted Piers. Right. He's great. But we it, can't sit there and say, what if, if they don't go out and hire them? In other words, I can't sit there and imagine their act for them. But I think that I did say that she was great. She had, you know, she, she had a lot of stage presence and that she didn't have material. And she didn't make it as far as the other comic because she didn't have material. So you think you're the voice of reason. That's interesting. Don't you think, and I was going to say I this I think to we you. come at it from different perspectives, right. but, but we'll have good, uh, healthy discussions. I think it'll be good. Now, tell me what happens in Vegas week. Do we, Vegas do, week do we the really week. decide? That's where we decide yeah. who really goes yeah. through. And we sit in a room and we argue because it's got to be down Let's to not the 40 argue. Just listen to me and everything will be fine. Really? We really? can get out of that room in 10 minutes. You have no idea how competitive I am, and I really am, you know, and I'm really serious about trying to find, we sat up right. till 2, 3 in the morning. Oh, oh my no. goodness, don't I even will, say that. I will put a pillow over your head and suffocate you if you keep me up till 2 or 3 in the morning. <laughs> Vegas is the long hours. You, That's you know the long hours because we really, do we really, do the producers come to us and say, listen. All of us. We strongly urge, you're saying it's me, you, and Sharon really me, make you. it. The, and the producers. Oh, and the producers. Yes. And we decide. Yes. Till 2, 3 in the morning. Well, we will look at the tapes of what they did. We'll take everything into consideration and we'll say, what do you, you know. Is it hard to make that final cut? The uh, Vegas is, is brutal. Death, brutal. Because you feel bad that you're not. T on two levels. Okay. Number one, because you're making, you know, they're saying 48 and you're going, but this guy was great and this guy was great. Yeah, we got to give him a shot. Right. Yeah. And so, and uh, amongst us, judges yeah. and producers, we we can get pretty heated and argue. We do. We get passionate and yell at each other. See how passionate you feel about somebody, and then right. your guy's not in, you know? And you got to live with it. And you got to live with it. So there's that. And then you have to face them. And these people have, you know, their hopes and dreams, you know, they've made it all the way to Vegas, and then they face you, and then they give us... I think that's going to be harder for me than I can imagine. That, that, that's the that, hardest part yeah, of the job. I, I hate I, that. I don't like to see somebody's dream burst but like the other day a girl called a father called in and he said i'm having my 10 year old audition blah 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 and, he, and i said okay she had a tape on youtube i listened to her i said she's terrible she doesn't have any she doesn't have it she could develop she's 10 years old but don't put your kid through that what yeah, are you doing i would hope that i would love if people just phoned in like that but the thing is that they're going to be standing in front of you and they've made it to Vegas. Right. And their hopes and their dreams. And, and it's, it's set up so that it's really tough. You know, I mean, if, for people who have watched the show, everybody shows up in Vegas. And we tell you, they're, they're put into three groups. Right. One group, <laughs> we tell you, you're not even going to perform. You're right. going right to, uh, to Hollywood. We're oh. not going to Hollywood anymore. You're, right. going to, you're going to New York. Right. Wow. Okay? Right. To New York, yeah. You're going to New York. One group, we say, you are going to perform here. 
Right. And there's 48 spots. <laughs> okay. Well, there's right. not 48. The people right. that went you've got to essentially right. audition again. Went to yeah. New York. Right. You've right. got to, There's 22 remaining spots. You got to go for the 22 <laughs> remaining spots. Right. If the third group, if we can't find 22 in that third group, you get there'll a be shot. five remaining spots for this whole third group, and you can go. We have oh. real power. Oh, you have no idea. That it's third so, group you, must be. What a fun thing, but but a big responsibility in a it sense. It really is. People's, as much as it's fun and everything, people's lives and careers and futures are in our hands. And your words are like daggers. Do you think when you were coming up, I mean, you had a, you know, you've, you've had a brilliant career. Do you think you would have done America's Got Talent? I don't think you would have gone that route. You, you I didn't... did. I, I, I started on a show called Make Me Laugh. All right. Which was basically judging, you know, for every second that they didn't laugh, right. you won money. Right. And then I, the next show I did was on Showtime. It was, a call, it was called The Laugh-A-Thon, and Jimmy Brogan hosted it. And it's and true. It was you a did, contest. I, the way I became aware of you was the Merv Griffin show. That's where I, I got 14, turned on. I did 14 Merv Griffin shows. Yeah, I got turned on to you through that. Yeah. So I guess you, really you built your career on TV. But you've honed your act outside of television. You, 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 I play every, I'm still playing every, I do 200 live dates a year. How do you work that into this schedule? Do you, do you, do, do you get off uh, America's Got Talent and then go fly into a date? I will usually fly in and out and do a date, yes. So you're busy. I'm but you also have busy. mobbed. And I do mobbed. Oh, we got to get to that. But, but, but finish this for me. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Howie, don't you think on America's Got Talent, and I even watched you with Piers, uh, don't you think you promote your Twitter account too much? No, here's the thing. It feels desperate to me. No, here's you the You don't thing. need to. I mean, you don't need to promote I, that. I'll tell you why right. I'm promoting Twitter. Go ahead. At Howie M. Mandel. Yeah, you know, what is that? I mean, but, but oh, why do you on, care? You're on Twitter. I'll tell you why. I'm on Twitter, but who gives a fuck? And you're going to love it more than ever on this show. And I, I want to say, I hardly I'm tweet. the one who told Piers Morgan about Twitter. Right. And even before you did that live tweeting when you were watching your movie, right. I did it three years ago. Really? I did, well, the, that first... The, <laughs> okay. No, 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 no. On the show, because I found this Twitter. Okay. Okay? And what was amazing during the live shows was... People were going, that's, I, I would read the tweets live. As right, I remember. Going, and they were going, you know, he's off key, he's off key. Or they were going, we can't, we can't hear you. Or they're going, and, and I see like but a, a barrage. Wants, but well, I'm not going to sit there and, 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 and listen. I read A it. big mistake is for us to react as an audience when we judge. And, and Simon said this. The biggest mistake you can make is react to what the, the audience is doing. If they're cheering and screaming and then you put them through. We have to but tune out the audience. And, we, and, and the Twitter people, you have to tune out. Who are they? Well, we, here's what I do. We're interested in your opinion. At that point, when we're in the live show, right. I think that we're looking for somebody that is marketable to America. And even if I don't like the act, even right. if I'm not a fan of country music, I'm not really a fan of magic. You will read the Twitter and say, okay, this, now, since they like it, I'll put them through. I think that's no, wrong. No, no, no. It's not that easy. But I, <laughs> I want to be informed. Right. I want to be informed by what's happening. And I have a you live... Would think and this, they got mad at me. The producers went, you better put that down. Right. NBC came out and said, stop that. Yes. And it, this year, this past year, right. they told everybody, tweet and do it because they're they getting did. another platform to uh, so Everyone's with social media. Yeah. But I, I think that it is our obligation to give our opinion, which you do. I do. And then, and then uh, fuck Twitter and everyone else, and this is it. We're the judges, and that's it. But don't you want to know, does, you know, I will say that, you know, to a, a contestant, you know, I don't get it. Right. But I got to tell you that you just lit up. And I don't go by the audience in the, in when, the theater or right. in the studio. No, we can't. No, but there's 15, 20 million people listening at home. And if, I, if, if it's coming through, it's amazing how different something seems when you're there live right. versus That's, how you watch it or how it. Right. And I'm interested in seeing how the audience is. How many it. times during the season do we get to have sex with the good looking girl contestants? so that they can get put through to the next round. Uh, well, like how often how do you take times? advantage? Like, do you take advantage of that a lot? It is, um, <laughs> it is encouraged. Yeah. But <laughs> right. You, you, you send out a vibe and you hope for the best. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yes. You must but, be. Do we have a lot of downtime? No. Uh, no, there's not a lot of downtime. You get in there and things start to happen. Yeah, that's the thing. The 12-hour day is like a packed day. It's act after act after act. See, I'm a fan of, I sit, when I'm not, Working, I'll sit on YouTube. I watch TV. My TV's on twenty four seven. I don't sleep. That's the problem. You're a little too into it. We get we can't spend all day there. Let's move along. Get the opinion and go on. Well, we get the opinion and Good. we do right. move right. on. But 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 I could see. I love great acts. I love bad acts. It's the best job. It is fun. I, I tell you what. I said to Robin, 
I said, I got to get on one of these shows and be a judge. It's got to be the greatest but fucking that's what job ever. And what I'm telling you, Howard, is don't p- stop thinking about it. But stop thinking about it. Just show up to the party. I'm glad you said that because what originally. I, what uh, I wanted to ask, because one of the things about the judging, Piers would make up his mind pretty quickly. Yes. If he hated it. Well, act. he wanted to get out of there to a CNN and show. And he'd yeah. hit the buzzer. <laughs> yeah. And then he'd turn around and look at you two. Right. And you would let him finish. Yeah, I thought you were doing that to irritate yeah. him sometimes. No. No? Really? No, because you... uh, here's the thing. I do have empathy for anybody who's a performer. And, you know, I don't believe, and, and they only have 90 seconds. Right. So if you can't wait another 20 seconds, that doesn't mean that there aren't some people. But the concept people... is to gong show them, in a sense, to buzz them if and they're I not do. good. Right. And I you have. Do. It's not that buzzer. I have hit the buzzer, but right. not as frequently as, as peers did. Did you hear the rumor that they were thinking of adding a fourth judge? Did I did you, hear yeah. that rumor. But I understand that that's, not. that Simon was pushing for that yes. yeah because do you, do you think that might slow it down well Although first having, of all, i don't really i don't really understand the concept because yeah the, just the the odds of you know voting three right, the, the breaks right. The, you need a tiebreaker how does i don't know how four would work right number one number two especially in the live show right you know you'll that's that's hard for me because they'll they'll say you know you got 20 seconds right you got you know so you want to critique it you want to tell them why you like it and you right. You always feel like, did, I, did what I say make sense? You know, it's funny. I was going to say to you before that, um, you, know, you know, this concept of overthinking it. When they first approached me about doing this, I said, oh, okay. Now I got to come up with, I said to them, I need to see the acts ahead of time so I can do blah, blah. And they said, no, we're just interested in your opinion. Then I started thinking, oh, what's got to go on, what I'm going to do, and this and that. And I said, Don't. no, that gets in the way of the show. The secret, I believe, is that Spontaneity. it's not the Howard Stern show. It's it's America's Got Talent. They're calling me in to be a judge, it and was, I should just give them my opinion. It was and that's such it. an adjustment for me. You know, the right. thing is, as somebody who's a performer and wants to be loved, you know, when we're in Austin, Texas, right, and they say, "Ladies and gentlemen, fourteen-year-old Carolyn from Austin, Texas," the crowd there is going wild right carolyn can't sing a note a right fucking note and right. i go really you know singing is not really it's not for you it's not for you <laughs> yeah. and and these 300 people or 3,000 people who's ever in the theater starts booing me i mean right. that was that was tough and i have to say you know what but america's on board i hope i mean it was really tough the wow. first time to, i could imagine and they they could hate they turn on you they're excited that you show up and then they hate you well also as a great performer as you are I would imagine it's difficult sometimes not to stick it up and not to say, okay, I'm going to do some comedy here, or now it's my turn to talk and I'm going to do this. That will ruin the, the, the whole idea of the show, right? I mean, what I have found to be the best, and if I can give you any advice, is stop thinking. Right. There is no job in the history of show business. Where you don't have to think. It's this is nothing. it. It's <laughs> nothing. There's right. no preparation. People like Jason Raff and all these people, yeah, they, they create a, a, a monster. They, they build it. They work. They've been working all year long. They're picking the acts that we're going to well, see. I've, I've spoken to Jason, Meredith R., Brandon Rigg, uh, Paul Telegdi, and, yeah. and everyone said the same thing you're saying. They said, look, we just want your opinion, and that's it, and then move on. And, yeah. and that's what we're after. Yeah. I said, well, I can do that. I'm and I think if you overthink it, yeah. that'll show. Right. You know, it'll look like prepared... You know, I don't, pre- I don't prepare material. Right. I don't prepare. I, it's just whatever comes out. And you know something? Your intellect and your uh, honesty right. is what has gotten you to where you are. And if that's what people that, are interested if in. If you bring that to the show, right. and, you're, and you, as long as you don't try to be something that you're not right. or that you think you should be. Is this your third season? This is going to be my third this season. Is I've, done, be, I've done two. You've done two seasons. Yes. This is your third. Yeah. You think Sharon's excited about doing it? I think that she's very excited. She's very excited about you. I think that this is going to be a little hard for her. With uh, the New York thing. Because she has the talk, right? In, right. in Vegas. Right. In, in uh, L.A. Is she on board? I, I, I assume she is. Right. So, what, why are you asking? Do you, have you no, heard No, no, I, I don't know. I, I haven't had any contact with Sharon, except she came in and did our show a couple of weeks that ago. That was so before did you, you had announced. Yeah, she said she's on board, but so I didn't know. So she's but, on board. So what is she going to do? She, how, how does she do the talk? I don't know. And, yeah, I see. She I did not uh, say she was on board when she, she was didn't? here. What did she say? She said that she was staying with L.A. and that, you know, New York seemed to be a problem for her. 
She I, loves the show. I think right. and would love to do it. I don't know it. that it's a problem for her as much as it might be a problem for CBS, right? Is that but isn't, but isn't uh, our show, America's Got Talent, way more important than that dopey talk show she does because <laughs> we're, we're a network show on at night that's a huge number one hit. Well, if, if she's going to give up one show, give up that other stupid show. I don't think show. she's giving anything up, and I'm, right. I'm, I, I, I haven't, I'm so busy that I haven't had any contact with her. I right. assume she, if she wasn't on board, we would have heard about right. it. Right. So I think it's the three of us. Was there, uh, I was reading about your relationship with Piers and, and Sharon, and one time there was an incident where you guys were on a plane. Yeah. Piers was asleep. Yeah. When he woke up, Sharon put her tits yeah, in his bare face, t- like bare, bare tits, tits bare in his really? face. Really? And, and he yeah, was upset Nick, about that? Uh, because Nick was videotaping it. Nick, Why would he be upset about Nick that? Nick Cannon videotaped it. I'd love that. I know. Would put I your tits in my face every fucking day. <laughs> She's got well, great rack. She does. Why would he be upset about that? Um, I think because he's the anchor at CNN and he felt that that, was, <laughs> yeah, that wasn't the image he wanted to Didn't project. Pierce give up the wrong job, honestly? When we, we, I thought Pierce was terrific on the show. I've said that everywhere. Yeah, I was, you know, um, I was happier with him than he was with me. Right, but CNN, yeah, I think he was happy with it. I think he liked the animosity and the, it you didn't so? feel real to me. Do you think it was real that he really didn't dislike you? I think he disliked, um, I think he didn't get my my way of judging. I think right. he didn't get my sense of humor, and I think that he... he uh, I do think it was real. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I don't know. I was, I took I was the, real. I took the test on the America's Got Talent website to see who you're most like as a judge, and I was convinced I would be most like peers. I was most like you. Really? That's what it said. Mine mm-hmm. came up with... I took the test, too, and mine came up like Brandy. <laughs> really? It's <laughs> frightening. Yeah. You know, remember she was a host. Yes, of she course. Uh, David Hasselhoff, Brandy. Regis used to be the host. Then it was yes. Jerry Springer. I'm right. a big fan of the show. So yeah. I'm, I, I like like you, I said, hey, I'm sitting at home doing this. I might as well go get paid it's to be the, the judge. It's the best job. Just, I'm very honored that they chose me. I know, but you, sound, you seem very incredibly neurotic and worried. No. But that's just him. I approach everything <laughs> in a serious manner. You I really appro- do. But appro- don't... Appro- well, I'm I not take saying, it seriously. I'm glad that you're on board and you're taking it seriously, but I- I'm telling you... Have fun. Be yourself. But look, the Hoff. Let's talk about it honestly. He didn't take it so seriously. I don't. Oh, I think, th- I think he, he did. He, I, I think, think he, he p- took it like he takes life. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's it. Like he takes his hamburgers and his children. It's, you know? If it's not important to the judges, it's still you know. In, in terms of the world events and where we're going as a country and and, and 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 how our world is going, this is not the most important thing. But if the judges on this show don't take it seriously and really look for real talent, then the show's whole premise is out the window. Here's where it, here's where it, for me where it goes wrong. If the judge is more concerned about how they're being perceived right. versus their honesty. Has that happened? Was Piers, uh, uh, are you referring to Piers? I'm not referring to anybody in particular, but I, you know, I know that it's hard for some judges, even at a time when they believe that they should be negative right. or they believe. And, and so I just learned and I'm comfortable and th- I've got three years in right. and I, it'll take an adjustment for you. Yeah, I think so. You know, it'll take an adjustment. It, it, comfortable in being booed. I get booed. Right. Like crazy in every well, hometown of the travel. <laughs> <laughs> but you're sitting, listen, when you show up someplace and 3,000 people from their hometown are there and they hate you because you're, you haven't found any talent. There's, there's mornings where we'll go through crap, 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 right. and we haven't found anything. And, yeah. and you know, we make comments like, what is <laughs> happening in this town? It's, it's a hard adjustment, but it's a, it's a great show. Now, I like Nick Cannon on the show, Howie. I love Nick Cannon. I think he does a great job. He and, does. I, and, I, and I told him that I was on his show, and, and I really do, but I am so worried about this guy. Today, Why? he announced in the... Well, first of all, his kidneys uh, failed. failed. Why did they fail? This guy doesn't want to be home. He works <laughs> nonstop. They you say, the, did you know his schedule? It's like nuts. It's nuts. Now he announced he's directing a movie No, where he's teaming up comedians... And who is he teaming him up with? Comedians and rappers or something? He's directing a movie. When? This is a guy who is not aware of his own health. He's definitely not a guy who wants to be home. Let's be honest, right? I mean, he's, ta- he's, he's like a, a Jamaican. He's taking 50 jobs. <laughs> and I said to him, I think you're key to the show. I want you there. Why don't you give up a couple of jobs? And Didn't the doctor tell him that? Now he announced he's directing a movie. Well, then that's Big stupid. mistake. It's stupid. That's Maybe stupid. we should do an intervention on this guy. I think there should be an intervention. I mean, what's he doing? Of- 
They're telling me he 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 takes a pillow and lays down on the floor between takes or something. He does. Yeah, I mean it's He's, insane. He sleeps whenever he can get. I've never seen anybody. You know, they talk about Ryan Seacrest. Right. Mm-hmm. He puts Ryan Seacrest is basically unemployed compared to Nick Cannon. And Ryan's <laughs> got a lot going on. Yeah, he's got to be thrilled, Nick, that you're on board because New York. He he was taking the plane flights. He was always flying with me. I was always. It was crazy. His radio show starts at six in the morning, which means. He was in L.A. starting the show at 3 in the morning. Right. Finishing at 7. Right. Then he drives to the set of America's Got Talent because his call right. time is earlier because he's the host. Right. And he literally would go from 7 in the morning till about midnight. And at America's Got Talent in downtime, he would take meetings because he's an executive at Nickelodeon. Yeah, so how, how, is, how is this guy alive? Uh, well, one of his kidneys quit and left. Right. Yeah, I was going <laughs> to say, I can't take this anymore. completely understandable that his kidneys failed. Have yeah. you ever called him aside and said, listen, I care about you. Uh, why don't you fucking calm down? I mean, do you don't no, have to have every job. You've I, never done that. I've never done that. You don't feel you know, comfortable with that? No. I just, I told you, I show up, I don't care. I just, I do, <laughs> did you get I don't a, give any thought. Did you get the invite as I did uh, for the special dinner that uh, we're Jim, having the, the night before? The, yes. Uh, yes. You no, know, no, not Jimmy, no, no, not Jimmy's. Oh. We're having an America's Got Talent dinner. Did I get the invite? Yeah, yes. well, I saw your name on it. Oh, they put your, your I, uh, I email address on there. And did they was, really? Yeah, I was like, well, they, they shouldn't be sending that to everybody. I, I, uh, I didn't get it. Yeah, because you're no, hard you to get a hold it. of. You know you're hard to get a hold of. Yeah, well, well, well why can't you get a hold of me? I, uh, no, I, because you screen your calls and you didn't want to talk to me. No, bullshit. It is not bullshit. It's a service that forwards my call no. to me wherever I, I am. I wasn't at the phone. Can I? Of course, I want to talk to you. No, you didn't. You wanted, okay, to, you wanted to, to hold it. You wanted to hold it till we were on air. No, bullshit. I, because I called Gary. Gary told me that you're supposed to call the Spanish fly, and then I, <laughs> and and then I so I called that. I right. called that number. You never and called. They go, they go and and then it says in the space, leave your name, and I go Howie. Right. Mandel. And then they go, we are looking for him. Right. And then it goes away. I wasn't there. Wait, wait. So they go, he's not there. Would you like to leave a message? Well, I don't know who Spanish Fly is, so I'm not going to leave a message but and a phone hear- number on there. No, I didn't hear your voice. So I don't know. It t- says well, Howard. Wait, wait, wait. So then, so then uh, they say he's not there. Will you leave a message? I go, no. Call back two hours later. Okay. Same thing. Howie. Now, your phone rings somewhere, and then you weren't there. <laughs> it rings. I, I'm not there. Sometimes I'm not home. But I called, I, I, I'll answer I called my message. three times. I didn't leave a message. Well, so he you doesn't leave a message. He's on the phone. I don't want to talk to him now, and that's that's okay. He he doesn't leave a message. I, I won't Gary said, did Howie call you? I said, no, he never called me. And it doesn't give I him will any not, How would I know? I no. won't leave a phone how number you, on a robotic but Howie, thing. Who, I don't know who How would this. I know you called? Because I left my name. It goes to your phone. No, if you don't leave a message, it doesn't go anywhere. And then I checked it. I heard Gary talking about it. I heard you talking about it. I didn't call you. You were waiting for my call. And I called Gary during the show that day, and I said, check this number. He told me that was the number. You do hear it. Your phone rings. <laughs> I didn't get you. I, I mean it. Howie, Howie, I love you. Why would I want to talk to you? I don't know. Uh, Why don't you try, I'm busy, not I'm not at home. They're cell phones now. Yeah. But doesn't this thing search every all your phones yeah. and wherever yes. you are? It, no, it forwards it to wherever I tell it to go. Right. But I wasn't obviously in by my phone. A whole it day. goes to my home. A whole day? No. I don't know. I never got a call from you. I never got a call from you. Why don't you switch it when you go somewhere? I do, but I might have been out (laughs) running. I might have been, sometimes I do stuff, you know what I mean? And then you you said, and then you wrote me an email. Yes. And you said, I'll call you. And I never called you. Right. Well, I didn't want to bother you. <laughs> you were calling me. I didn't. I wasn't looking for you. Well, then no, you, I you didn't to tell talk me to, to call you. But actually, this is probably the conversation we would have had on the phone, right? I mean, we so just So you want to save it for radio? No, it just worked out that way. I mean, what would we say in private about this? How do you know what I wanted to call you about? What did I assume you wanted to call me about America's Got Talent? Yeah. Right. Right. So we had it. Did you have something private you wanted to say to me? Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited. Do you I'm, know? I'm excited to be working. With how's you. the uh, OCD? It's not good. It's bad. Well, Worse they, than ever. Uh, a little bit. You know, I'm doing this show, which makes it hard for me. Which show? The uh, Mobbed. Mobbed. Which you, are you, will you watch it tonight? I know you're on yeah. Letterman. Now, this is then, your second season. No, it's really the first season. We did a special. Right. That's the one I, and right. I promoted. Tell people what Mobbed is again, in case they don't know. Mobbed is, is you know what flash mobs are. Right. And there's the, the uh, spontaneous outbursts of uh, singers and dancers in malls and train stations. You go and on I Twitter a, and everyone decides to go do the Michael Jackson dance. Yeah. Right. Okay. So I thought, okay, so that's kind of neat. And that was, you know, five years ago they were doing that. And then I love Hidden Camera. And I thought, right. if you have a secret, an intimate secret that you want to share with somebody... 
What better way to do it than to take that person to a public place and they hear it in a musical? And the first one we did was a proposal. But what if you want to quit a job? What if you want to tell uh, your wife that, you know, you know that she's cheating? Right. Wouldn't it be great to oh hear that in a giant is. musical? <laughs> That's on tonight, the show? T- tonight is one. It, it's, uh, it's a really good one. I don't want to give away what it is, but the guy, they don't always like work out Like if I'm fucking right. a guy's sister. Mm-hmm. I could get you to do a flash mob. Yes. Hey, guess what? Howard's fucking your sister. Yes. Oh, that's good. I yes. like that. But on tonight's show, we have, yeah. and it's right after Idol, on tonight's show, it didn't work out the way we thought because what happened is we, we always have this hidden camera thing, and it was this young guy, and as the dance breaks out, the it, music starts, and we did kind of a, you know what, Smooth Criminal? You know that yeah, video? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. Michael so the door opens, and we had this backlight, and these, these dancers come in, and they got chains, and they're backlit, and they're smoking and everything. The guy thought he was going to die. He thought, I don't know what he thought, some sort of dancing gang was after him. And he starts going, leave me the fuck alone. What the fuck is this? I'm getting out of here. Don't you fucking touch me. You can I hear would do that, me, too. It's me. And, and they're going, just calm down. Just watch. Just watch. And they go, no fucking way. Get me the fuck out of here. And you see me going, lock the door. We thought the whole thing. We had 2,000 people waiting there. Do you have an episode where there's a pedophile and then they announce it uh, on the uh, air or something <laughs> Prince, like that? Chris Hansen <laughs> comes, Hansen out, comes out dancing. Like I would like to see that. Um, so with the with the OCD now. Yes. I didn't know this part. You never told me. When you were a kid, when you were like a teenager, yeah. you'd come home from school and shower for two hours. Yeah. That's unfucking believable. You've Why? been tortured by this your whole life. Yes. I mean, imagine in high school. Who showers in high school? No. I showered once a week in high school. Right. Boys well, are usually not notorious th- for not showering. That's right. Go ahead. Hand no. hands, Bill. You're on with Howie Mandel. Watch Howie Mandel host Mob, premiering tonight at 9 o'clock on Fox, after American Idol. That's a good spot. That's huh? a great spot. Hey, isn't Howie. It? Will you watch it tonight? I want you to see it. I will watch it. Uh, and I'll watch you on Letterman. Thank you. Hey, Howie, how are you doing, brother? All right. I'm, I'm doing okay. Oh, how, well, oh right, right. But how are we going to deal with that, too? That's I'm another Howard. question. What are You're the Howard. odds of uh, of two Howards being on... A same show. You know what I call it now? There's two Howards and an Osborne. It's H2O. Oh, very good. <laughs> Look at you. <laughs> yeah. See, that's why. Marketing, marketing. That's why you're a genius. Okay. Uh, hey, ham hands, go hey, ahead. Hey, Howie, uh, listen, with, with your OCD... And your germophobia. If you if your wife just comes out of the bathroom or watch stop a private parts, are you still able to to kiss a private parts or, or not? Yeah, really? Howie, yes. with, with OCD, are you able to go down on your wife? Yes, that's a good question, yes. actually, Ham. As long is as that I, really true? Do you? But do you sit there and go, oh fuck? I'm no, gonna, I'm going to get germs. No, I won't. I won't. I don't believe it. No, I'm telling you. Why would I lie? You probably prefer not to go down. Wouldn't you prefer just to fuck? And not have to and have like any a no. saliva exchange <laughs> no, or anything like that. No, I don't mind that. It's shaking hands. It's hands. But why do you think your wife is like like you? A woman's vagina probably has more germs, really, than a hand's. When is the last time you've looked at a vagina and seen it cough? Well, I don't know. <laughs> we, I heard you were freaked out in the hallway because Ronnie, the limo driver, was coughing. Ronnie coughed. I know. I know. But then he goes. He goes. It, uh, there's not a sound. I'm just standing quietly in in, in, the, in the hall. <laughs> yeah. And then I hear <coughs> like that. <laughs> I go, are you sick? He, he claims he's not uh, sick. Wait, wait. I go, are you sick? He right. goes, no, it's just my voice. <laughs> Your voice? <laughs> you weren't talking. It'll be about three feet too long. But they, uh, did he just cough? Yes, he did. Are you sick, Ronnie? He's not sick. He's run down because he was traveling a lot. He's not voice. Just, what? Voice. voice. He lost his voice. voice. Wait, you cough in silence. It's not like, what kind of voice? Silence. There was no my were, voice. No, you, there was no sound, and then you coughed. I went like this. <coughs> right. That's not your voice. When you're talking to me... Understood. Not understood, apparently. <laughs> run down, he's sick. Yeah, I've been all traveling, man. I've been out on the West Coast a lot, back and forth, so... People travel, they bring back the bird flu. What can I do? You could stay back from me. I had to do it. He's been doing these live club dates where he goes That's out and he screams, says. and so he's losing his voice. But I'm I on tour. I do, I do dates all the time. Yeah, well, you talk like a normal person. Yeah, you don't he, scream like he does. His act is going up there and screaming and yelling out obscenities. Really? That's the whole act. I saw him. You'd at probably the, put him through on I America's saw him, Got Talent. I saw him at the UFC uh, <laughs> yeah. fight, and he told me he's, do, he's, got, he's got a deal with Fox. He, right? do, he had his own talk show. But he's not allowed to say. <laughs> yeah, I don't what know. What kind I, of marketing plan is that? I can't talk about it yet. I don't I know. I can't talk. It's, it's a bigger, it's got a bigger veil than your announcement for America's Got Talent. One of the questions that came up in this meeting with NBC is like, they said to me, well, how much promotion are you willing to do? How much were you willing to do on your own? And how much are you willing to do with the other judges? I said, I would be, I would be 
thrilled to appear with why Howie. Do, why do they send Oh, there's in? Ronnie. Why would they send you in if you're sick? You, Howie's going to freak out. What? Did, come on, man. What? What do you want to say? I'm in the middle there's of There's nothing issue. wrong with me. No, you're <sighs> sick. You were coughing even in the car this morning. And I was, I I'm germophobic, and I was freaking out. Uh, hello. You were yeah. sick for two weeks? Yeah. I wasn't, okay? No, but what does that got to do with anything? You're, I'm you're saying, sick. No, I'm telling you, I am fine except for my throat. Why are you so much? And I'm fine throat. Throat. except for my throat. My throat yeah. is dry. Just, I told you. I just got a touch of the strep. Yeah, he's <laughs> All right, listen, I, I'll leave you back to your interview. All right, hey, thanks. Howard, thank you. Yeah. Howard, you, for Howard TV, you're going to love it. It was such a great moment. Ronnie's, like, standing against the, the, the hallway probably like six feet away from Howie, and he coughs. And he tried to make it like, he tried to like cough into his shoulder, and Howie just starts like moonwalking. Yeah, right. Is the worst part of America's Got Talent when at the beginning I know That's, you have to I run, hate, you have to run through that. the audience. Why don't we do away with that? I don't want that either. Well, you know what? You got them to move to New York. Right. You've got the, all these changes. Can I put that on you? If there's one thing, I love the job. I don't mind the hours. Everybody I high fives and this and that. Oh, it. my I goodness. You have to yeah. high five? I don't. <laughs> he doesn't. He, he does a little fist bump. Right. Uh, yeah, and I, and I run. But these hands, it's just this sea of, it's like the worst <laughs> fucking nightmare, the opening of America's Got it's Talent. It's the only show out of all of them, like X Factor, American Idol, blah, 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 where the, the judges run through the audience. Maybe that, they'll make a change. They've made a change. They've changed coasts. Mm -hmm. so maybe they'll make a change. I don't want to touch the, I love the audience. Right. I just don't want to touch you. you Love them to a degree. Yes, I don't want to touch their hands. Why don't we wear hazmat suits as we walk in? Literally, like a spacesuit, like we're, we're landing on the moon, and then we and then we I came go, in we... last year. I came in in a bubble. In a, uh, I, I remember. To, uh, yes, I felt for you because I know it's uncomfortable. It is for uncomfortable. You. Yeah. I hate that. I really, am, I'm not going to lie. That's... See, I'm not as bad as you. I'm able. To, I would be able to walk through the audience, shake everyone's hand, and then when I get to my table, discreetly put some of that um, Purell on my hands. Yeah, but just... I can't use the Purell anymore. Why? But, oh, because yeah, you've yeah, hurt your you hands. Understand. No, I told you. I've, I've told this story before. I you overused it, and, you get and I got I got warts because I had viruses because I killed all the antibodies in my in my hands. Oh, so you can't use Purell anymore? No, I, I well, I don't know anti. I, I had my friend who's a surgeon give me that. Uh, I was using Purell. I was using whatever they betadine, whatever they use yeah. in, in, right. for surgery. Oh, I betadine. Use, no, betadine is. Uh, I was. I don't know what I was using, but whatever they. Scrub do you up sometimes with. forget and shake someone's hand like no. I do, and then all of a sudden I go, oh, now I got to. I never forget. You never forget. <laughs> no. When somebody puts. The hand. What do you do? You offer them the fist bump? I, the fist or nothing, or I turn and walk away. And you turn. Oh, I, it's so <laughs> terrible. I mean, you is. are a social guy, and look what you're going. No, through. I'm not as social as, uh, as you think. Oh, really? I'm not. I'm not really that social. I love people. I'm just. I am. I'm a. You mess. just coughed into your hand, so I, I was very aware of that. <clears throat> yeah. Don't don't come near me. <laughs> but I won't shake my hand now. Uh, what, <laughs> what's going on with Deal or No Deal? Is that gone? Yeah, there's uh, a slight talk of doing more, but I don't know. What does that, that mean, would... slight talk of doing more? I thought the show was well, a huge Well, it had become hit. a daytime show. Right. Yeah. I did. Well, we did 500 episodes. Yeah. You know, that's a lot. I mean, right. I was, I was dealed out for a while. Do you think that's what happened? The show just burnt out? They put it on too much? I think so. We're on a hiatus, and uh, you know, there's, there's always a possibility that there could be more. Look, Fear Factor is back. Which do, do you miss come. it? Yeah, yeah, it was. That was a, great a good job. gig too. It was a really good gig. You've got my, some great gigs. All my single friends miss the fact that I was on uh, Deal or No Deal. My right. son misses. Yeah, right. Deal or No all Deal. All those hot chicks. You know, I had my son working. I don't know if I told you this. One summer, I got him a job as an intern <laughs> on the show. Yeah. And they came to me very uncomfortably, and they said, "Howie, can you talk to your son?" I go, "Why?" They go, "He has set up his office under the steps." He was under, you know, oh. the girls came down. Right. Oh, my God. So yes. he was looking up their skirts. He was looking up their skirts. And, and <laughs> I like said, old man. Alex, yeah. Yeah, right. But, uh, and I had to talk to him. And then he goes, I was there first. And then they came down. I go, you were there. You weren't there first. They were there first. Do you realize, I think I'm the first American judge. Yes. On America's Got well, I'm Talent. American. But you are now? Yeah. Weren't you, you were born Canadian, I right? have a dual citizenship. Oh, you do? Yes. Oh, so you are American. All well, right. I became all right, good. All right, because uh, I, I like you were the first born and raised in America. America. Right. Yes. I have a huge burden on my shoulders. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, You're I'm very... excited. I can't wait to work with you. I. Um, I am. I can't tell you can't how excited. Be more how great I think it is for the show, and I think that your presence is going to take the show to another level. I really I hope believe so. that. I think it'll be fun. I believe it. And I love I love all the controversy and I love that wherever I go people you know that's the burning question. Well, I I was bringing this up before because uh I did a Super Bowl commercial for America's Got Talent. Did you really? 
Yes. Oh, that's great. I shot one. Okay. And I, I, I assume it's going to air this uh, Super Bowl. Right. We'll see. Oh, what? Seemed funny to me. <laughs> but, you know, I'll believe it, it when I see rejected? it. Could be rejected. Who knows? <laughs> but uh, um, but they said to me, I said, when uh, what you know, I'd like to do some promotion with the other judges. And so there was a discussion on how much promotion I would do. Right. And when I would appear with the other judges. So at some point, I guess, we'll be appearing somewhere together. That would be great. Right. And you and I have a problem because we're going to have to be quiet while the other one performs, <laughs> even in an interview, right? <laughs> That's a difficult thing to do, isn't it? Do you find that difficult? Um, I've gotten more comfortable in, in you know, we're you're ensemble. coming up. At, Right. And you see, you're coming from the autonomy of doing this show, and right. this is what you've done all your life. And I came from stand-up comedy and whatever. So it, I, it was is really it hard for me. It was a huge adjustment. Because even when you did Deal or No Deal, you were the host. This is, like, I've got to sit quiet while you're doing your thing, and I've got to let you do your thing. Yeah. So the thing... I don't know that I can do that. <laughs> but that's what I'm telling you. As somebody who went through the adjustment, right. don't worry. We'll don't, get through it together. Don't, don't think about it. Just do whatever. You know what? If, if the fact that you want to interrupt me in the middle of me talking hits you, interrupt me. All right. Don't, but well, don't think about it. You know what? I'm going to interrupt him or I'm going to sit doing. quiet. Whatever happens, happens. Now, you never finish that. Who's going to be, what are you going to call? be called on this show? Well, I'm Howard. You're I'm Howard. Howard. Or I'm Your Howie. Majesty. Your Majesty. The king of all media. <laughs> I'm Howie. Uh, okay. He's yeah. Howie. Thank yeah. God he's a Howie. Yeah. No one called... Uh, in ca summer camp, I used to be a Howie. Right. And when I got on the radio, I said, fuck being a Howie. <laughs> I'm a grown man. I'm but we've Howard. We've talked about it. Howard, for me, is uh, it, it makes me cringe because Howard was always Thank in God. trouble. Yeah. So I'll be Howard. You'll be uh, Howie. Howard? Yes. Nobody was happy when they called me Howard. R yes, that's true. So you'll be Howie. I'm Howard. We got Sharon, and we got, we got Sharon, and we Nick. got Nick, and that's it. And let's and then, go do this thing. This is going to be great. Not so fucking talk about it. And let's what are go you doing do tonight? Tonight I am watching myself on Letterman, of course. That's after. <laughs> I'm going to watch. You watch Howie Mandel host Mobbed, premiering in what is probably the best time slot, right yes. after American Idol. And it's yeah. something to see. You see a guy think he he's going to die, and there's nothing funnier than that. Nothing funnier than guys dying. <laughs> and 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 I tweet live. You think that's not a good thing to tweet? You live will here? tweet during the show. Yeah, I think that's a great thing. Will what? you? I'll, I'll Twitter you. I'm not going to read that. No, I want you to say you're watching it. I want to just see that you're really. watching What is it. with you and Twitter? You're obsessed. I am Forget obsessed. it. Forget that. You're not. You're on it. I'm on it, but I, I'm, I'm on it once or twice. Yeah, every two weeks we get a, uh, a, naked a picture, picture of, of my your wife. wife. <laughs> That's it. I don't know what else to tweet. What would I tweet? Anything I got to say, I say here. I have this. So, right. so why would I? Tw what am I tweeting? So you, you're, uh, you're pointing out I have nothing. All no. I have is Twitter. It's too important. How many followers do you have? I have uh, over 16. No, I have th uh, 300,000. Not this. 300,000. Yes, yeah, so not a lot. Do you see it as a sign of success if you have a ton of? Uh, Twitter no. followers? No, but I see it as a sign of, that's my social, I'd like to do that rather than in a crowd. I don't have to touch people, right. but I could talk to you. It's your I way of I can communicate. Really. And you can sell tickets to your shows the and world. things like that. Well, I'm not selling tickets. Well, I can, I want to get viewers. Right. Okay. All right. Well, listen, you're a judge. I'm a judge. God bless you. I'll see you. I'm going to see you in, in two a week. weeks. A week. Is it a week? It's a week or two. Yeah. It's this month. Sometime this month, I'm going to see you. You excited? I'm excited Are about you doing it. No, I think I'm fine with it. I, I mean, think I, you are fine. I, have I a listen lot of to energy. you every day. Don't worry. I worry about just um, keeping my health together. In other words, I don't want to be sick when I go there. I don't want to. I want to have my energy together because this job that I do yeah, waking two up neurotic early. guys are I'm telling very each neurotic. other not to worry. <laughs> you are, don't worry. I'm the guy who won't touch <laughs> anybody. How don't dare worry. you tell me not to worry? <laughs> don't worry. Look who I'm and getting advice. And he's worried from. that he's going to get sick. Yeah. Now you know why I don't take Howie's calls. <laughs> I'll listen to him. I'll get nuts. I live in a glass house. That's right. Uh, yes. And you know what people in glass houses should do? Throw stones. That's right. Right. What do you do today? I, I saw you. You're hosting Regis. I'm with and Kelly. Kelly. I'm going over there now. You're, are you the co-host? Yes. You'll be the co-host with Kelly Ripa. Yes. And J -Lo. Is it true? And J Lo is the guest. Yes. Oh, that should be hot. That will be very hot. And so I heard she lost. She lost sixty pounds. Who? Oh, J Lo. J -Lo? Yes. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. Mark, How's that? Mark, Mark Anthony, Anthony. <laughs> moved out. <laughs> oh, you're terrible. Uh, you going to ask her about this young boyfriend that she's got? Oh, I should, shouldn't I? Oh, fuck yeah. I mean, can't this girl be alone for 10 minutes? I mean, literally, she just she just broke... This is like her third marriage ended. Wait. What? When your marriage ended, how long were you alone? 
Oh, uh, 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 a minute, but I'm a guy. <laughs> Women are supposed thing. to think about things. Really? Of course. Well, first of all, this is her third marriage that ended. Right. She just had kids with this dude. Right. He's out. Now she's got a brand new boyfriend. Slow down a little bit. At least date a little bit. Why are you so concerned what? about... Because I'm a happy. judge. I'm judging, judging her. You're judging. I yes. judge everything. I'm perfect yes. for that She's gig. happy. God bless her. God bless her. Yeah. Slow down and smell the roses, honey. Yeah. I wonder if he'll, I wonder if he'll come over to the show with her. Oh, he probably has homework. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Will you ask her stuff like, you know, like how long did it take the new guy to get into your pants and stuff? Or is that too controversial for uh, the Regis and Kelly show? I don't know. I don't. I, I will, uh, you know, whatever. I'm not thinking about it. Whatever right. happens, happens. You didn't prepare for this show at all? I don't prepare. You don't prepare ever? No. God bless you. I don't prepare. I never did homework. I didn't. Uh, preparation is not my... <laughs> like, I'm going to Letterman tonight. I already know exactly how it's going to look. When I do talk shows, I prepare. You do prepare. That's what I would assume. Yeah, yes. Right. Yes. But as the host... I don't prepare. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, no. it's a good philosophy. It seems to be working Yeah, as a you. guest, yeah. he prepares. I do as a guest, because I want to be charming, and I right. want to be witty, and I want to be funny, I, though I didn't prepare for this. They say that the ratings for Kelly Ripa are higher now that Regis is gone. Yeah. Is that yeah. true? I think it is. And I think that it's because of that, you know, when uh, Kathy Lee left, right. when they were ro- rotating all the uh, possible co-hosts, right. Kelly was going, the, the ratings were also higher because people want to see. It's like this spinning wheel. Right. right. Oh, is this going to be the host? Is this going to be the host? Have they asked you to be a no. permanent host? No. You're, no. you're good at it. I am. I'm yeah. very good. I mean, I'm, I've seen people on there with her that are not too good. They think they're funny and they're not. But you do a good job. And they said in the paper that they're closer to finding a permanent replacement for Regis. So I was wondering if they had said anything to you. Well, I would imagine as each day goes by, they're closer. Because one day they're <laughs> going to choose. Right. So tomorrow they're going to be closer than they are today. But it could be that they're so into this groove of uh, rotating hosts that they are never going to get a co-host. I think they should keep doing that, isn't it? Don't you think that would be a good show, that they can continue to do that? Do you, like, do you like doing that show, the morning show, and being the co-host? Yes. I, I think that Kelly is brilliantly funny. Do you yeah. find yourself biting your tongue, though, because it's yes. so... Yes. In other words, the things you really want to talk about, you can't. No, right. I can't. You, right. know that, you know that. That's the secret to success, biting your tongue on some of these yes. shows. I wonder if you're going to bite your tongue at all on America's Got Talent. Well, of course. I mean, yes. listen, it's a ne- first of all, I have to bite my tongue or else I'll end up taking over the show and turning it into the Howard Stern show. Like right. you said, you resist right. turning it into the Howie Mandel show. Right. I've got to be able to do that. And secondly, I got to be able to realize that it's a network show that's uh, that's kid friendly, and it's about me being but, a judge. But that's not... what I say. You know, I've, I don't know. You may have seen some of the interviews that I've done about you. Yes, you've the been show. great. You have been nothing but a, a very responsible broadcaster. I mean, right. the, the the language and whatever happens on Sirius is different than what happened on terrestrial radio, right? right. Listen, I'm going and, on Letterman. And you went tonight. on Letterman. I've seen you on Letterman Leno, dozens of times. I, yeah. And Leno, you've never crossed the line beyond I don't think standards so. and practices. Yeah, and if I have, uh, whoops. <laughs> All right, listen. Watch Howie. I've been such a responsible broadcast. Thank you, Howie. You I think you have. Go watch some of my old shows. Uh, watch Howie Mandel host Mobbed, premiering tonight. Yeah. Tonight is the big night, 9 o'clock, on Fox after American Idol. Yeah, and next Wednesday, too. And Howie's a great guy, always been a friend of the show. Our co-workers. Now we're co-workers. Isn't that amazing? Colleagues. Robin, tell (laughs) Howie what a delight I am to work with. He's in for a real treat. You're in for the time of your life. (laughs) Tell him how much fun I am. (laughs) Tell him how fun I am. His partner in crime who is is hermetically sealed in another room. (laughs) Well, what's funny is that, you know, you talk about trying to reach me on the phone. Robin and I spend very little time communicating. Communicating outside of the show. Right, because you spend four or five hours. Yeah, we see each other all day, and she's right. got a life, and I got a life. But a call life. back would have been nice. Uh, yes, Robin. Do we ever call each other back? Never. No. No, never. You, know, you leave a message, so and you let it go. <laughs> and you let it go. <laughs> so I won't uh, listen, Howie. Stop calling me and harassing me. <laughs> you know, uh, I'm here with uh, Mike Marks. He runs my, my company, and he's Keep a away fan. From me. Wait, wait, wait. He's a yeah. huge fan, and he wanted to know if he can get a picture of you. Now, this is. Le- le- but not, right. he, doesn't take, uh, he doesn't have a camera. He does sketch artists. He's a sketch he artist. Wants he wants to draw. He wants to sketch us. Can he come in for like. 10 minutes and just sketch, and sketch you? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. That's what he does. I don't mind. Go ahead. That's what he does. See, you don't get under my skin like pe- like with peers. <laughs> yes. uh, I, you amuse me. So Mike Marks can come in and just draw you? Uh, sure, absolutely. Okay. For a good hour. All right, Howie. Yes. Calm down. All right. Everything will be fine. And stop worrying. 
That's my advice to you. Okay. Uh, Howie Mandel. You're going to teach him what worry is, I think. Oh, he, he doesn't even seen know. Worry. No. Oh, you're going to learn new neuroses no. from me. You're around me. You know, it's not oh, good I'll for two OCT people oh. to be together. Really? You will be out neurotic by me. No. You've never met anyone like I me. I can't wait. This is going to be the season of all seasons. This I is the television in. explosion of the century, of the decade. Can't it, wait. I can't wait. Can't wait. Howie, yeah. in, in classic Howard fashion, he's overanalyzing something before it even starts. Right. Your best advice to him is Was to just... no, if any job I've ever had, in anything that I've ever done in show business, and I've been in show business for 35 years, it's the only job that there's no skill involved, there's no planning involved. You can be an idiot. Just be honest. You know, and that's all, that's the only advice I have. Just, just do it. I think that's Nike's advice, <laughs> but, but don't think about it. And in turn, the great off-the-cuff impromptu moments will happen. He's a witty, smart, intelligent man who is, who is, who you know, has an opinion. And if he's just brutally honest and doesn't think about it, it'll be he'll he'll enjoy it, and uh, we'll have the best results we can ever imagine. Basically, he should follow the the same template that he does for his own radio show. I mean, just. No, I believe on his radio show he does a lot of preparation and knows where he's going. Right, you but know? from the honesty and the, yes. that standpoint. Yes. All right, Howie, good luck. See you later. All right, Lisa. Talk to him. See you in a See you. Yeah, see you, Ryan. I wonder if Howie's going to have a cold now. Oh, stop it. There was a lot of confrontation yesterday on the wrap-up show. I don't know how many people heard it, but I did. And, man, oh, man, a lot of fireworks. What is going on? Why is everybody fighting around here? It's mostly about Benji. I received in the email a lot of letters about people who just don't want to hear about Benji at all. Like on the wrap-up show, on this show, one guy said he's going to cancel his subscription (laughs) if there's any more Benji talk. Oh, dear. And uh, I thought, actually, I had limited the Benji talk, but the wrap-up show picks up where we leave off. Right. What we don't pick up on, they discuss. Yeah. And a lot was made that Lisa G is consumed with Benji and the girlfriend and that the girlfriend is using Benji. But uh, I think, uh, you know, she's just weighing in with her opinion, much like everyone else. You don't think she's obsessed with Benji and I'm jealous? No, but someone told me that literally in the newsroom she talks about it 24 hours a day. That I didn't know. Oh. That I didn't know. That she is obsessed with Benji and and, uh, Lisa, his girlfriend. And that she talks about Benji and Elisa constantly to the point that some people put on their headphones so they don't have to hear Lisa talking about it. Wow. Yeah. So she'll talk to herself about it if nobody's listening. Yeah. (laughs) They say she's obsessed, but, you know, from what I heard, she's just someone like me who weighs in about the people who work here. Benji is in a relationship where I I thought Lisa actually made a lot of sense on the wrap up show. And I thought she gave Benji some good advice. I'll play a clip and you tell me if you think she's dead on. I do. And uh, she she basically says, well, here, I'll play it for you. I'm not mad at you. I just, like I said, I it feels tacky to me. And that's upsetting to me what? because I like you and I know who you are. And we had a private talk what, what, about yeah, it. Yeah, and you said there's very, a part- you said very, very mean stuff publicly about my girlfriend. I thought you were what? being very, very. Uh, what did she say that was mean? I, I'm not going to repeat it. Well, I think the comment was in one of my pieces. John will repeat it. Lisa, <laughs> Lisa called Lisa's career a non-career. No, I said. Re- referring to her 
musical ability. No, I said Benji's trying to be a hero to a non-career. That's what I said. Lisa's memorized the line. So, so that I was, know so that, that was hurtful. That was a strike. And I apologize. No, you never did. Actually, you said, I'm sorry. You kept saying, I'm sorry if that hurt your feelings. Didn't you, you also apologize for saying it? I think, one, it, you, you said it. I don't know what, what your rage is about it, what your upsetness is, is about well, it. She's not a rage. You haven't heard what everyone has been saying here? That, so why do you, well, why, so other, why, why are you, look, why are you if giving... if she's that talented, she'll be fine on her own. She's getting noticed. You you can take a breath about it, Benji. Well, okay, what if I... I feel like you're in this, like, trance about, oh my God, I have to get her a career, a recording contract. I, it will I happen. enjoy she, being part she's of She's being meant... Yeah, but it just feels... Like too much. Well, it, it, it doesn't feel much. organic. That's for sure. It to does what? not feel to anything. It feels very manufactured. It was almost like an intervention yesterday on the air because what Lisa says is true. I mean, Benji is obsessed with getting his girlfriend noticed to the point that I think Benji thinks this is his cachet with her. Yes. That as long as he keeps her career going, she'll remain interested in him. Mm. And if Benji was honest, and I could actually talk to him about it, which I won't even attempt. Uh. I believe that he would relax a lot more if he stopped all this and, and finds out whether she loves him for him. Dude, you're, you are being so... Uh, I this, think Lisa made a good point. Honestly, pal. What, what do you, what's the point? The point is... It, let me, the let me, point let me is you what you just asked me. No, the, no, let the, me ask you a favor. Because what you guys do, you put things so generally where you, where you can't... I'll be specific. To, be as specific okay. as possible. It seems to me you're devoting a tremendous amount of your personal energy to promoting Elisa's career. And even on the air, where you were one of those guys I sort of admired, you never really, like, plugged everything to death. And, uh, you know, you, you've had your little plugs and things with that party planning thing or whatever it is. I don't know, stripper parties or... I don't know what you had, but everybody plugs. It seems like you've amped up mm -hmm. a lot. And it seems like a lot of pressure on you to keep her in the limelight and to keep her career somewhat going like that's your cachet with her she like i could even hear like the brother on the news saying you're a great and now you have a brother on the radio and you have her parents on the radio and the news department covered it but i feel like you that's your being a hero that's what's important to her and you're coming through in spades and it's keeping her interested in you okay so i think you're feeling a lot of pressure i i don't you when, don't okay her, her brother well, i thought lisa made a good point her brother and her family came to our show on right. monday night and the news interviewed them Yes, and I think that's the type of energy you want to keep coming her way. It's very important. Okay, so, so but there's two, two different issues. You're saying, one, I'm trying to do this energy, and two, I'm doing it because I'm scared I would lose her if I didn't. I think you think that's your, you know, this is a girl who wasn't that attracted to you or into you. And ever since, you've been running around on TV She's, trying to get her name mentioned. She, I mean, you were the guy who got beaten up by a CNN guy. Just trying to yell out her name. You know, you work for the Howard Stern Show. Probably you, you could have uh, yelled out something related to the Howard Stern Show. Instead, you're, you're screaming out on CNN and risking your life to yell out Elisa Jordana. I've gotten beaten up right. for you. No, no, I know that. For you again. But I'm just saying, it's a lot of pressure to come through and be Superman for her. And uh, I think you ought to chill. And find out if she really could handle she not getting that. Absolutely. Okay, that's all I'm saying. It seems to me I, she probably does love you and probably will be able to handle it, but I think you're afraid to let go of this. That's not. But but that's not true. Okay. And you're just, right. just an assumption I'm just, you're making. I'm making an assumption. You're it's right. A, and the things I'm. And I thought Lisa was right on the money, and 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 I thought she was coming from a, an, an honest place. Whether or not she's obsessed with you, I don't know what goes on back in the newsroom. Uh, she might very well be, but. Uh, well, uh, what I was saying to her was, let's say all this is true. I don't know why she's treating my girlfriend like crap. Right. No, that doesn't make sense. And Gary, I thought, was right on target with you. You know, Howie's coming in here today, who's going to be on America's Got Talent with me. And I'm going to even say to him, I've noticed in season two that Howie spent a lot of time promoting his personal Twitter account. And then I watched him on Piers Morgan a little bit yesterday, and he said beautiful things about me, and I love Howie, and I'm anxious to work with him. But he really is hell-bent on constantly announcing his Twitter account. And I'm going to suggest to him that this year on America's Got Talent, he, don't, he doesn't do that. It, well, I, because I, what I, it, it becomes annoying to the audience. I don't have carte blanche. And it looks desperate. I don't have carte blanche on this show at all. I don't have 
a zero. Any it, blanche. Any blanche at all. <laughs> right. I, uh, anything right, I bring, Whenever you get a chance, anything it seems I bring like it's up, top. It's something you're asking me about. But it's uppermost on your mind, as Gary pointed well, out, that, to get that, the plugs reading, in. reading my mind. Well, here, I'll play you what Gary said. And I thought Gary was pretty much on the money here. I feel like you're becoming like Jackie. Like, you're crowbarring in plugs, and I feel like it's like it's become about plugging everything that you do. There's You don't reel it in at all, and it's getting tedious, and I almost feel... Like Howard's the sleeping, you know, the sleeping tiger, and you're poking him, you're poking him. One day he's going to get up, and it's just going to go enough of this shit already. And I'm not sure what the end game is. Like, like if, if it was for something, like, is this song really super important to you? Like, super important on a level that you're going to go all in with I, your plugs because you can't plug like this forever. I don't think first. Well, I mean, I, I don't know how to how to fight that. You feel that it's not way. a fight. That's no, I mean, question. I don't know how to argue that. The, the, what's the question? Is this song the most you, important you, thing in my life? In other no. words, I feel like you're you're I, th- I feel like you're taking whatever you put in the bank as far as goodwill on how much you could plug something, and you're putting it all in on this particular project. I, I you know I, I think a lot of things that you guys think I do to seek uh, attention on the show. I'm not. I'm just being myself. But, but my question is, are you you? Answer what I just said. You, everybody, we all know that well, we have. We have you're we, saying your question is, do you, you know, do you still beat your wife? Kind of question. That wasn't and what I said. Says, no, it's it's that kind of question that it presumes. <laughs> it's not. It presumes some guilt. <laughs> no, no, it doesn't. I'm saying that you're taking all the goodwill you built up, and you you, you plug day and night. That's I don't, not. A, I, I don't that's think not. That's, true. that's not bullshit. That's a fact. No, but th- I don't think I do, Gary. I plug day and I do plugs on the show that we're we're given the right. opportunity to do. You bring it up whenever you can, and you do whatever it's you not, can. You, oh, wait a second, and you do whatever you can to draw attention to that's having people interp- talk. That's your it's interp- not an interpretation. It's yeah, a fact. It Are you yeah. talking about the writing on the hands, Gar? At least. And, that, and you you were very um, not truthful today. You yes, did say I to will. me off the air yesterday, I thought about taking you off and I thought, why should I do that? I thought about that, the fact that like, I did it for, for a purpose right. of that I, hey, this is something like when I want to look at I can look at it and it'll help me learn, learn, learn the lyrics. And then I, th- right before I got into work, work yesterday, I was like, fuck, you know what? They're going to give me shit they're going to say because they always think I'm doing shit for attention. Right. And I'm like, because they think that, maybe I should wash it, even though that wasn't the reason I put it on there. But I decided, I said, you know, fuck that. It's, it's something I would do for a purpose, not for the attention. I'm not going to just, just change things for, so they don't think I'm seeking attention. That's what I said. And I think that you, you took part of that. But you didn't take the full well, thing. Well, I think you said, I thought of their feelings, and I thought of my feelings, and my feelings were way more no, important than not, what their feelings are. That's, oh, that's what I'm changing. hearing. No, 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 but, no. But that's what no, you're no, saying. No. I'm saying that you would have listened to me clearly. I heard you. Okay. I heard everything you, you said. You thought I did it for a certain purpose. I said, that's not the purpose. I did it. But I, it hit me before I got here that you would think that. But I said, you know what? What I'm doing is not a bad thing, and I did it for another purpose. I'm not going to change I'll it give just you, because— I'll, I'll give you that you did it for whatever purpose you want. Say you didn't do it for the purpose of getting on the air. I'll give you that. But you realized that, that it was going to be a distraction, and you said distraction— How is it a distraction? Well, Benji, don't be fucking stupid. Don't don't well, that bullshit about— Of course it's a distraction. It's just, Everybody fucking noticed it and handed Howard a note. It's weird. You're fucking writing on your hands. It's, not it's odd, big. and everybody noticed it. Don't act like it's not weird or a distraction. I don't think it's a. Dist- I don't think it's that weird or that much of a distraction. It is a distraction because you hand me notes and things. I'm looking at your hands on that m- little machine there. Uh, you definitely- and in all the years he's been here, he's never written anything on his hands. No, but for Elisa Jordana, he's putting stuff I, on his hands. You saw notes on my hand through this machine. Y- yeah, I did. When you put your, all of a sudden, I went, "Oh wow, what's that?" I thought it was weird, and then I went, "Oh, it's Benji's hand." You you really noticed it that way? Yeah, I did. I noticed it. I'd forgotten. Someone had said to me, Ben, just writing on his hand. I said, I'm just not going to deal with it. And then about an hour, to, about two hours into the show, or whenever I brought it up, three hours into the show, all of a sudden I saw, oh, there's something all over his hand, and then I couldn't ignore it anymore. Okay, well, I, I'm sorry. Yeah. I didn't know you could see it through the machine. Yeah, but you know people can see it. You, you do know. In other words, a lot of your energy, where it was devoted more toward the show no, and no, coming that, up with funny angles, right. show, is more devoted now toward getting your girlfriend's career in t- on, on target Writing and, on uh, my Gary's hand. making a good point. It's something to think about. Okay, he, he don't fight it. He's he, Gary's a pretty astute guy. He's not. He's not doing it to pick on you. I really don't think Gary has a bad bone in his body. Out of every, out of all the vipers in this room, <laughs> and believe me, there are many. I think Gary's the least. Can I just say something? Viperish. My frustration with Benji is not over what he's doing so much, although there's a lot of it is that. But whenever you say to Benji, why are you doing this? He goes, I'm not doing that. You're crazy. No, right. no. I, right. And he doesn't acknowledge that, it. But, I but am, you, you do know, you, would you acknowledge to me that you are very consumed with getting her career 
mentioned or on track or getting some, you know, getting some sort of traction for her. Do you do you feel that at all? Uh, to an extent, yeah, okay. but but not like it's. I don't feel it's out of some desperation to get her to love me. She loves me. I think but, it's your cachet. It's what you bring to the table. No, I, I think it's. She's not attracted to you physically. She but absolutely is. She has said on my air that she was not. I, originally, when she met me, she wasn't, right. and I had and lost. I think when a woman that you're attracted to says that, you say, "Well, what is my cachet? What can I do to convince her?" Now, I remember once you did that, once you it clicked for you that maybe you could get her, you started going on CNN mentioning her name. You started to go to press conferences and screaming out her the name of her songs. Or, that was that was yeah. a uh, when well, I well w- no, isn't no, no. it interesting. That's the shift. No, it was you a went fun, from sh- fo- show it was focus a funny to, thing to do on on the uh, on the press conference. There was nothing funny on this show that you could have done the Howard Stern show related, but more it, it was a Howard Stern thing. It when, isn't a Howard Stern. When it's I went Lisa to the press thing. conference, it's more about Elisa's thing than right, the Howard I thought, Stern show. When I went to that press conference, the Herman Cain press conference, right? I actually walked there with Lisa G. Okay, and I knew I I didn't want to focus on the actual. Uh, it was his charges of sexual harassment. Okay. I wanted to do something kind of absurd. And out of all and the I topics thought, was your of, girlfriend's song. And we had we we I thought of it on the way over. Right. And it was about uh we had about 15 minutes. So what was upmost on your I mind? I was thinking should I just start doing questions about the weather? And you're like thought, or, you're like Hinkley who has to impress Jody Foster. Trust that, me, it comes off a little bit like that. That wasn't the initial intent of that. Then I all thought, right. "Oh, this will be funny if I just start Pled, pled. And lately, everything has been uh, your girlfriend centric. In other words, every bit has been sort of something to do with Elisa or your appearances with her. That's what Gary's talking about, and that's what Lisa G's saying. She's saying, "Chill out, take a pill, and be in the relationship." I, I and you don't have to provide that all the time. And, I, and, and, I, if, and you know what? It'll take the pressure off of you. And I do, but let's say, first of all, I, I disagree. You'll enjoy your relationship. I, more. I disagree with the assumption that I feel I have to provide that. But let's say I. But there's did. no doubt in my mind you do. Okay, so let's say let's say let's say that's correct. All right. Why? Why else would every bit for the last couple of months have been about Elisa? Why? Why should Lisa in the news? Lisa G. Be mean to me and me, especially mean to my girlfriend about. I that. can ask her that. That's a separate issue. I'm talking about you now. What's your motivation in this? And I'm telling you, you're insecure, and you don't think I'm you can not, hold on to that girl. I, I, that's not true. Yeah, because for because out of all the topics in the universe, you picked to go to the Herman Cain press conference and talk about your girlfriend. That, but that was about, and now speaking of your girlfriend. Here's Lisa G. Your real girl. Lisa, your real girlfriend, the, the girl you really should be with, the woman you, who yes. really loves you and who you should be with. <laughs> Thank you, you for hearing me. Right. I appreciate yes. it. No, I mean to be no different. I mean, every guy is commenting on Benji. I don't know why. Why, as soon as you do, uh, they say you're in love with him. But right. I do Thank hear you. back in the newsroom. That you constantly, to the point that certain reporters have to put their headphones on. <laughs> yeah, I've been a little consumed. You've That's why consumed. I didn't cover it. Right. They had to take you off the Benji story because you're consumed. <laughs> right, like the firefighters who uh, had to cover the 9-11 widows and they ended up falling in love with them. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You might be falling in love with Benji <laughs> from covering him. You know they had to police a G off the story? <laughs> oh, my goodness. They felt that she was getting too emotionally involved. <laughs> Happens. Wow. Benji, that's power. See? <laughs> so you heard what I was saying. It, it, fr- yes. it, it, it you star- did make a good point. Thank you. It's starting to feel tacky to me. And nothing against his girlfriend personally because I don't know her. Right. So um, I feel I feel that no other spouse or girlfriend here is doing what's happening. And it feels tacky to me and disrespectful to you. And the fact that she doesn't get it. Who's telling her, oh, keep doing it, keep doing it. This I see. Is- see. So that's why you're 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 critical of Benji's girlfriend as well. Yes. That she should say to Benji, listen. Is this okay? Uh, it's just a little embarrassing. Not- uh, my, you know, maybe maybe you shouldn't be putting your job in uh, jeopardy, yeah, so Yeah, or is this all right with Howard? Such is as what, a- right. Lisa? Right. Everything. Well, T-shirts, what, give, me a specific, videos. give me a specific thing. Everything, the way it's well, no, no, feeling to me. No, everything's not specific. I, so say well, she, well, she, she just no, said okay, T-shirts Lisa- and videos. Okay, what are- she just said it. What okay. are you not hearing? What are you, how many examples okay. is she going to come up with? So what's the video you're talking about? Just everything I've seen or every no, other name every video. mention. Name a video you've seen. Oh, God. Benji, I'm oh, not going to argue well, but with Howard, you. Howard, that's some bullshit. She's saying she doesn't like a video. What video is she talking about? I guess she's referring to YouTube and the song and then you constantly mentioning where people can hear the song what? or buy the song. Where did I, do? Howard, Howard, he put, I think post, she's calling that a video. They post videos 
on YouTube of them talking about a variety of things. I've seen two or three of them. What's wrong? Wait, so you, wait, Lisa, have you done videos on YouTube of you and your cat? I would imagine that Lisa would think as a writer on the show, you might be more involved in the Howard Stern world than the Elisa world with your videos and your, your content. So wait, she's upset about putting up videos yes. on, on YouTube. Yes. Is that correct, Lisa? That's part of it. It's no, everything. No, 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 or, or she'll what, say to me, did just, you see the Benji Couture? It's a picture of her. Not, Lisa, I can't even Lisa, see you on the calm, T-shirt. Calm, calm so it just, well, there no, is a specific. Wait a second. No, no let me go she back just, to the first specific. She gave you a great specific. Let you me go back to the first specific. No, Benji, no. Why, why can I address the first one? Benji Couture is okay. a picture of your girlfriend. Well, it's he's on it, but it's where's Benji? He's not even looking at the camera. So right. you don't like and the way you, I'm not looking at And she's saying she why she's critical of your girlfriend. I'm just interpreting. She's saying... Maybe the girlfriend would have said to you, you know, Benji, we just started going out. You're already putting a T-shirt out with me, and you're calling it Benji Couture, and you're mentioning it to Howard's fans, and you're marketing it to Howard's fans. Right. It, it's a little bit embarrassing. She's saying, where is she in this, too? Like, she should say, gee, I don't feel comfortable. Who, Lisa? Lisa? No, Elisa. That's what Lisa just said about the Benji Couture. Okay, so, so you, you know. don't like that I, I put shirts out? She didn't out? say she didn't like it. She's just saying it's odd. Okay, it, Okay, but does odd give you the right to be mean to somebody? I had an opinion. Well, I told, I had an opinion. Right. You, I, I can understand. No, some, I know you've hired a personal publicist. I know you just did that. And I know that you have a, tr tr and I, I, I don't have a problem with that. I think you should build your career. But the, the, the sad part in you, this is You know is I just hired that, a personal publicist? Yeah. Okay. Did you? I, I don't know. What, for sure, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, you hired a personal publicist. From what are you basing this on? That that John Lieberman told us you hired a personal publicist. He said he spoke to him. Sounds just like high pitch Mike. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, anyway, I'm not against that. Right. I'd like to see your career blossom. I'm, I have I have personally taken an interest in every guy who works here. I'm seeing that their career blossom. I know that. I'm very very a very big proponent of that. I know. I applaud John Hines' efforts. I applaud Ronnie's. Every, anyone I could see. Sal, Richard, you. I'm not against that. No one's jealous. Right. When it comes to your relationship with your girlfriend, I question whether or not you're feeling a lot of pressure to come through for her. It seems like there's, it seems like there's a lot of Benji, Elisa bits going down and a lot of uh, thought going into the Benji, Elisa promotion okay. on your part. Okay. And I think that a lot of times it gets confused because when you could pick an opportunity like in CNN or one of these uh, Herman Cain press conferences, it might even be one time funny to mention your girlfriend's name. But to constantly have it on your brain seems to indicate to me psychologically that you have a lot of internal pressure to be Superman to her. Okay. And I, I know that pressure. I'm not saying I'm foreign to it, but it's a sad kind of s statement. It's a sad situation for you. To me. I and I think to Lisa and to some other people around here. I don't feel that pressure, but okay. I can't convince you that I don't. Well, it's odd that but, out of all the millions of topics, that's the topic that keeps coming up. You but, came up with a T-shirt, and it's basically a picture of your girlfriend T-shirt with you kind of there. And it's called Benji Couture. And you kind of just met her. And it's um, uh, a money-making enterprise. Okay. And, uh, you know, it's... Um, you know, I, I take advice from a guy who's had a pretty successful career. That's right. me. Uh, I'm not in the T-shirt business. Right. I don't sell T-shirts. And right. there's a reason I don't. But I certainly aren't going to, I'm not going to market a T-shirt about Beth and myself and sell it to my audience. Now, I know you're in a different situation and you're, you know, you're hungry to get something going. But pick and choose. Even when you go out and record a bit that's going to be on the air, pick and choose what your comedy is about shouldn't always be about Elisa. Sure. All right. It's so on your brain that it could indicate that you're falling into the abyss of like, wow, I go home today and Elisa's going to, you know, Lisa's going to want to be in love with me because she got mentioned today on CNN or she, there's a lot of pressure there. It seems to me. Right. All right. That's it. I, and it, even if I, 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 I say this stuff, what you're assuming is incorrect. I don't feel this pressure. But even if you were correct... I don't think you're aware of the pressure. Okay, that's, that's absolutely possible. Right. I don't think... It, I, I think you're ethically, Lisa, being wrong to be mean to me about it. Why are you throwing it back on me? It's like you didn't even hear what Howard said. And I don't think she's being mean. Uh, well, <laughs> I don't... 
I, I, all right. Well, one, you don't. She's th- critical of you and your girlfriend because she feels your girlfriend should say, you know, hey, maybe do a reality check too and say, hey, Benji, some of this doesn't feel comfortable to me. That, but that's irrelevant. I'm talking about you. I'm not talking about your girlfriend. I don't know your girlfriend. And I think she's lovely and she's. And, and as Lisa made a good point. If she's going to have a big career, it can't all hinge on you feeling this promote. Like, you can't be Colonel Tom in this situation. Okay, but I don't. I, I felt there was a direct, several direct things with Lisa being mean to me about it. There's been some where you're kind of, but you're kind of, it's a, it's a different role between you and I. Right. And, and with, are you if, being mean, Lisa? I had an opinion and I stated it, and then I apologized privately to Benji, saying, "I'm sorry if that hurt you." That's- uh, Gary, is Lisa being overboard and mean? I don't know. I mean, I, I heard the comment that she made. I think that she speaks for a lot of people who may not want to verbalize that, but mm-hmm. I don't know whether it's mean. It's an opinion. It's not like I hate that fucking bitch. It's just like I, I think Benji's <laughs> when, when spending someone, a lot of time. When Gary, we're, Gary, we're, Lisa, oh, let's clear this up, too. Do you have emotional feelings for Benji? No, I think he's terrific. I think he's very talented. Do you I, have romantic interest no, in Benji? But I agree with you. I think he is an amazing comedy writer. He's 10 steps ahead of everyone. And so when he's trying to sing with Elise, I think... Why doesn't she, as his girlfriend, say, wow, you are so talented. Write a sitcom. You've got a lot of free time. Write some jokes. Exactly what you were saying. Well, that's not her role. Saying. That You see, that's where you're overstepping. All right. But, because that's, that's not but who that's, she is. Or maybe she is that person. You don't know what she's but doing. But like I said to Benji, that's my issue. Right. That's what I said yesterday on the rap. show. I think show. you were more on target when you said to Benji that uh, she's going to make her own career. And you don't have, and you know what? Chill out and let, let things happen if they're going to happen. You don't have to constantly be promoting. Mm-hmm. You know, but I know you're spending a lot of time thinking about Benji. That's why they took you off the story, because I I heard that on late Friday night, you were texting John Lieberman about the Benji T-shirts. I mean, it's a Friday night. You're home. Yes. You're overly involved. Well, not anymore. Right. They took you off it. They took me off it. And you're discussing it now. I feel so much better. Right, right. I I feel like someone heard what I was trying to say. So it makes me feel good. You were saying that you. Or the, the the judgment was you can't be professional about this issue. No, that's not what I said. My boss thought it would be better if was. John covered the story because it Robin, was a live what do you performance. Think? I'm busy doing the news. <laughs> Why? Why are you not uh, I playing it? I care less about Benji. I'm with the audience. Well, Too listen. Too much Benji. You think you're, you're disgusted. You don't want to hear about Benji and his girlfriend. Benji is not real about anything. Benji's not in touch with anything. Why are you having a discussion? What am I not real about, Robin? I'm not getting into it. I'm talking to Howard. Well, maybe Robin makes sense. Why am I involved? I did get caught up. <laughs> I don't, you know what? You know, I, I, I got to think I'm about a, that I'm for a, a second. Sca- I'm, I'm sucked in again. Well, I got sucked in on the wrap-up show. I, I started to say something mm-hmm. in the middle of all this, and then I said, maybe it's going somewhere. And then I just started doing the news. I right. see. <laughs> Robin. Well, Rob, all right. Robin, well, maybe you make a good point. Robin, I, what, what, you maybe know, all I, of don't this. Don't call is. my name, Benji. I'm not What happened to you, like, trying to be a better person and not... Quote, I was minding my own she didn't, I, I talked to Howard about this. I called on Pretend her. Pretend you're not here. I'm here, and when you say something again... <laughs> pretend you're not here. <laughs> when you Benji, say why don't you pretend you're not here? <laughs> when you say That's something, not a masculinity. Very helpful. <laughs> I don't think you were masculine. What am I not real about, Robin? <laughs> well, listen. Robin maybe just made the best point of all. Uh, you guys, again, I got caught up I in I agree. This. I don't completely fit in here, but you guys make me a scapegoat, huh? and you pigeonhole me in a certain way that... No, no, I was actually interested in helping you today. I thought Lisa made some good points on the wrap-up show, so I brought it up to Robin, and then I brought it up to you. And I thought that Gary made some good points. I hadn't really been thinking that much about you, and then when I heard the wrap-up show, I became intrigued in this. So, but Robin just made me think of something even the bigger picture. Who the fuck cares about any of it? (laughs) So she could be right on, and I could be completely off on this. (laughs) But meanwhile... I'm weighing in with my two cents. I could be completely wrong. Here's my point. Benji doesn't take advice. Right. Why am I wasting my breath is what you're saying. It's true. You know what? You're right. God bless you. <laughs> okay, goodbye. All right, goodbye, I've Lisa. I've got things to All do, right, big yes. stories uh, to cover. All right, let's talk about Fred. <laughs> now, there's a topic everyone there loves. You go. Uh, good, good. You gave me a reality <laughs> check. Okay. All right, good for you. Score one for Robin. It's true. Here it is, 31 minutes into the show. And it's wasted air. 
Now, Robin, the deal is you don't like me. And so uh, you get you get angry. He's trying. He's trying. <laughs> he's getting to he's you. Trying. You're gonna get gonna, sucked in. I'm not going. No, you talk to him now, and then I'll yell at you that you're wasting the audience's time. <laughs> I'm I'm cured. Uh, do you like Benji? I just want to know. I love move Benji. On. You do. I love All him. All right, good. All right. Well, there's your answer. You can't talk to her, but I can. Uh, what I else wait. do you want to know from Robin? I can't wait to <laughs> how I'm treated when you really love me. I know. We all like you. Things reached the boiling point today between you and Lisa. Yeah. I mean, it, the gloves came off, and or, not that it got nasty, but it got very real and very honest. And can this relationship be repaired? Or are you just so pissed off at her that it, it's almost like she's trying to cock block you? All right, guys, remember no cell phones. Um. Yeah, I, I, I think I have an open. I, I don't, you know, I don't like some things uh, Lisa has said and done, but uh, doesn't mean I have a permanent. Dislike of her, I like her, and uh, you know, we'll see what happens. She made the prediction to me earlier that you and Elisa will be broken up by May at the latest. Well, that's cool. I mean, you know, I think it's very easy to predict couples will break up because most couples do break up, very few stay together. So, um, I don't feel that we will, and I hope that we're not. But uh, if we are, be because uh, you know, that's that's how things evolve. Do you think she sort of threw you under the bus in Howard's eyes and that she brought to light some things about, you know, you and the Stern Show and publicity and, and sort of painted you in a very negative light earlier? Do I think she threw me under the bus? Yeah, like she, she really, she, from my standpoint, I think she has some feelings for you or at least some a very strong liking of you and, and that's why she's so put off by this relationship but she I, I spun didn't, it as, as like a Howard it was an insult to Howard oh I see you know. so did, was she like uh, yeah she threw your, your she job have, under she, the bus oh yeah uh, maybe yeah I think she has personal feelings and she's trying to uh, rationalize it I think yeah so I don't know if I would say throw, throw under the bus but yeah she's trying to rationalize some personal feelings and find reasons that are not legitimate to, uh, you know, to uh, castigate me. So you want to lose all this weight and change your look, but it's not easy being a sex symbol around here. The women, it's driving them nuts. Where the guys? Yeah, some of the guys too. So. Yeah. yeah, including me. <laughs> all right, Mr. Brock. Thanks, Lisa. Today everything sort of came to a head. This has been building up for months and months and months. You mentioned at the end of the interview. Now I feel better. I do because Howard heard what I was saying, what Gary was saying, and that makes me feel um, that I wasn't just talking into thin air, that it made some sense. But the issue is Benji's not hearing it, and I think it's making him angrier. So I bet you he's angrier at me now. Is this the closest you've ever come to an interview subject in your career? Probably. But, you know, we work so closely here, but I think it was a good thing I didn't go and see them play. Um, I would have liked to, just to hear what the music was, but um, I just don't understand why he feels he has to sing with her. It just feels so phony to me. But is he really hurting anyone at the end of the day? Is he really he, um, damaging Howard's reputation or anything? No, he's not. But it just feels so tacky to me and disrespectful to Howard. You know, there's a line that you shouldn't cross. And it bothers me that she hasn't said, like, ooh, maybe this is a little too much. Or what does Howard think? You know, ooh, I'm doing T-shirts now with, really, it's my picture. I, I, it just doesn't feel good to me. And so I'm glad I said what I needed to say. Do you think Benji will ever forgive you for your, your hardline stance on his relationship? Yes, when she breaks up with him. You'll be there with open arms? <laughs> no. No, I won't. A shoulder to cry on? No, he can't have my shoulder. You know, he'll have my support in whatever he decides to do, but... Maybe he'll see it when she dumps him. And, and look, you, these words might come back and bite me if they get married, but... I was going to say, do you think she will, if you were a, if you were a betting woman, would you say that uh, Benji and Elisa... Benji will be a dump by Elisa eventually? Yes. May. You're predicting by May? Yes. All right, you heard it here first. Okay. Thanks, Lisa. Bye. Bye.
This is the best of the wrap-up show. A recap and behind-the-scenes look with John High and Gary Delabate. The best of the wrap-up show begins now. Hey, it's Gary Delabate. On Monday's wrap-up show, we were talking about uh, who's the bigger super fan, Marianne from Brooklyn or Bobo. And then Bobo called in, and we talked to him about uh, how crazy he is about the show. And then we gave him sort of a Sophie's choice. If he had to give a kidney to Howard or his wife, who would he give it to? You'll be shocked at the answer. We should talk about this Bobo, Marianne from Brooklyn. I think that's a good battle when you really think about it. Who's the more passionate fan, Gary? Bobo's probably a tiny bit. They're, they're pretty close. And Bobo might be a little bit more passionate, if you will. Passionate's one word, crazy is another. But, you know, for Marianne's a woman, and they're both leaving. Their, like I, try, I So I said to myself, okay, they're both leaving their family. But when a woman leaves her family behind, like to get up, you know, to uh, uh, before the kids even wake up, and so somebody else has to get the kids off to school, I think she's probably making a little bit more of a sacrifice. I, I, I kind of looked at it the same way, but in a more extreme way. And I do think, I, when I think of the, what, what love means, I think Marianne loves him more. But when I think of who is, like, a, like a, I, I think Howard could say to Bobo, I want you to give up your life, you know, move in with me and be my slave. And I think there's a good chance Bobo would do it. I don't think Marianne would do it. I don't think Marianne would give up her family. You're, you're, Benji's got something there. Yeah. Uh, Marianne loves Howard, but she does love her family, too. Bobo loves his family, but he might love Howard a little okay, more. Okay, so if Howard asked Marianne to live in his apartment for a month, you don't think Marianne would do it? For a I month. Th- I for, think, a, for a month, yeah. I think she'd do it for a month. But I think Bobo, Bobo would, would do, do it for, for a lifetime. lifetime. Yeah. <laughs> Bobo, is that true? Hey, how you doing there, guys? Uh, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, if you speak to John Lieberman, he was at my house for three hours, and he interviewed my wife briefly because she doesn't really like camera stuff. And she says, actually, uh, Howard comes first <laughs> in our lives. It was second. <laughs> but, uh, so, no, I put... Bubba, what's a, I, discu- I, what's a discussion with your wife? Like, if you say to your wife... But see, it's weird because, like, you don't go to, like, Letterman. You don't hang outside Letterman. You don't hang around a lot. You have a whole, you're sort of into the show in a different way. You you don't attend a lot of stuff, do you? Well, you know what it is. I'm out here on the island, and it's you know it's 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 cost of you know expensive too to get there. And I'm way out here. It's not like I'm in the city. But you no, know, Mar- nearby. Mar- 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 not in the city. Well, she's in, she's in Brooklyn. It's part of the city. Yeah, but it's still it's not easy for her to get here, and she's got kids. Oh no, I'm not she, saying it's easy. And she's got kids. She's got to get off to school or pick up from school, and she's not doing that to do this. But I would imagine yeah, it's don't... easier for Bobo at home because he could still have a relationship with his family yet follow the show as crazily as he does. Right, but like her kids are grown. And, you know, I got a five year old. You know, it's a little bit different. You know, but we're both crazy. I think it's a photo finish. It's almost like a horse race. You know what I mean? You don't know. It's it's right there, neck and neck. You Bobo, know what I mean? Bobo, you got to give up props, too. What's the worst um, argument or disagreement that you had with your wife over something having to do with the show? I think it's the amount of time that I spend. You know what I mean? Like, I, I have to learn to, like, we're out to dinner or something. She says, you're always working. I love Howard, but you're always working to dinner about the show. You know, could this be about us? I go, you know what? You're right. And then i got to catch myself. Was there? You know, it's just shutting that switch off. Was there ever a specific uh, incident or event that happened where you know you chose the show over something at home? Uh, yeah, going to the Superman round table, which I'm doing Wednesday. You know, we had something planned. I go, uh, listen, hon, we, I got to do this. And, was it? Was she it, knows how passionate I am. You know. Well, like, like here's a perfect example. Like Valentine's Day is coming up. So if you guys had made great plans for Valentine's Day. But then you found out that Howard's doing, you know, something for America's Got Talent on TV on Valentine's Day, and you don't want to TV vote, you want to watch it. Is it one of those things that you would fight about, or do you just assume your wife is going to understand that that's what it's got to be? Well, on a day like that, no, it's got to be dedicated to her, you know, because she is passionate. I mean, been patient with me with everything I do, you know. Um, but there have been times where, I, you know, I got caught up and I did, you know, that did take precedence over what we were doing. Hey, you the know? classic but, uh, Sophie's Choice question, like, uh, uh, they both need your kidney to, to survive. And one's going to die, one's going to live. Who do you give it to, Howard or your wife? Oh, my God, you asked me that question. <laughs> I, 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 
have to go to my wife because you know she's the mother of my kid. But you know, I love Howard so much, man. I, I don't know. How, would you get Howard, would, uh, Howard would be gone, Bobo? I mean, if you made that choice, and if no, you, no, if, he, you if, if you make him survive, he'll know the rest of your life. You're the one who did it. Yeah, I, I can't make him die. No. Would, would you give one to each and just let yourself die? Wait, you can't. Yeah, make him, you I'd can't, probably do that. You can't make him die, I, so you'd let your. No, wife I die? can't. I can't. I can't. I can't let either of them die. I think I just check out. No, what do you? So seriously, you got to do gotta one or the other. One. You got to pick one. Got to pick one. Oh my god! I, I, I know my wife's gonna kill me, but I got to go with Stern. <laughs> no, I can't. I can't. I, I, I can't because she's the mother of my kid. You know what I mean? I'm not that. You know, ball off. That's if I didn't have my kid. You know, it's different. Yes, you know? John Lee. Even though I love, I love my wife, but still. Well, you guys will get a kick out of this. You know, I spent a lot of time with Bobo. Bobo's therapist told me. Bobo's therapist told him that he needs to do something to back off the show a little bit. So Bobo suggested maybe he won't listen to the wrap-up show live. Maybe he'll just listen to it on replay. Hey, Bobo, that what's was, up with that? That was what the concession he would make to his therapist. But I interviewed his wife as well. It's a very telling interview. She says she understands that she knows she will always be second. She will never be Howard Stern in his life. Yeah, Gary, I guess that's the bargain you make if you're going to marry Bobo. Well, that's true, too. When you guys got married, because I remember meeting your wife when you guys right. were, were dating. So she knew, knew very well what she got into, correct? Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I didn't introduce until the, uh, I was in Huntington at a restaurant there. And I said, oh, by the way, I'm, uh, you know, do stuff for the show. And, uh, you know, I gracefully worked it in that way. If, if we, so she knew who I was. If we talked about this, stop me. Was there a Mrs. Bobo before the current Mrs. Bobo? No. Oh, so no, this is your my, first wife. Well, no, this is my second wife, but my first wife did not. I wasn't real. I was Bobo, but she was. She hated the show. She hated Stern. Oh, I know? see. So she just didn't go by the name Mrs. Bobo. No, no, no. And Dawn's proud. You know, she's proud to say that because she loves Howard. But did it? Did, crazy did, as I am. did the show um, have any effect on the ending of your first marriage? Yeah. Absolutely. What happened? Absolutely. She taught. I had a. Now, it wasn't as fine like I have now, but I had stuff on the walls and stuff like that. And she used to get crazy at times. And enough with Howard Stern. We go here, we go there. It's always about Howard Stern. And she tore my stuff down. I, I, I go, that's that's crazy. You don't do that to me. I worked my damn ass off. And I, I said, this is my enjoyment. I said, I'm out of here. You know, and that was that wasn't these deciding factor. But you know what? I got I got to find someone who who likes the same interest I have. Wait, Bubba, you, you know? walked out on her, or she walked out on you? I walked out. I I said I'm done, and she wanted me back. But I said I'm done. I'm out of here. Did you pack up the shrine as you walked out? <laughs> Well, I didn't have like a per se. Shrine. I had everything in boxes and tapes, but now it's full. You know, John could tell you everything's displayed. You know, the shrine and, is and, bigger and, than most New York City apartments. Is that right? Just I'm the shrine. You. Oh yeah, it's huge. It's, and, you know, but, my wife was very good about that, taking a part of our home. And, you know, I didn't even notice. She's surprised. She goes, you know, we had workers come in do the work. And she goes, I go, what's this going to be for Nick? And she goes, no, that's for you. I go, you're kidding me. He goes, no, I, I, I know how much you love the show. But, but what's the one thing, that, the one item that you own that is, is, in your mind, the greatest item, artifact, or piece of memorabilia from our show? Probably the Leroy Neiman, uh, you know, replica, which is signed and framed. I like that. And that's probably a dead heat with the crucified by the FCC box set. I, that means a lot to me, too. And that's signed also? Yeah, uh, I think so. We yeah. We're trying to acquire uh, Casey's foot. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Bubba, why does your therapist think you need to back off of the show? Well, because, you know, my wife told him things like, he's too crazy, maybe you can get him to calm down with it and, you know, have time. So what I did is, like, after you guys are off, I put on the dad hat, and then I do what I got to do, you know what I mean? And, yeah, I and, become, and you know... And do, do me a favor, if anything, you should listen to Black on Black on Delay. You keep, stick with the wrap-up show live. Yeah, keep us live, Bobo. Yeah. Or, 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 no, I will. or I will. Riley I or something like that. Or Jackie. Listen to Jackie on Delay. All right, thanks for calling in. Uh, John, can you give us a quick description of the shrine? Oh, I mean, it's it's almost hard to describe in words. I mean, everything that Howard's ever done, said, Bobo has notes dating back 25 years, his own personal handwritten notes that are dated with the questions that he wants to ask when he calls in. Piles and piles of notes, cassette tapes dating back 25 years. He's recorded every call that he's ever made to the show. He's recorded in some way, shape, or form. He went and got a new memory card for his cell phone, a $200 memory card, because 
all of his calls are programmed in as ringtones on his phone, and the phone couldn't handle all of the calls, so he got an extra card. I mean, what do you mean it, all of it, his calls are programmed as ringtones? He has all of his calls that he ever made, the re- the recordings of them, oh. rotate as his incoming ringtones. So it might be a Bobo call from 10 years ago. The phone rings. It's that. Then the next call <laughs> comes in. It's a Bobo call from five years ago. Got I it. mean, wow. it is so eye-opening. The big difference, I think, about he and Marianne is Marianne is addicted to the channels as a whole, anything surrounding Howard 100 or Howard 101 or any of that. Bobo is more focused on just Howard and in other words Marianne listens to all the shows on the channels so doesn't that right. some way make her the bigger fan it's an interesting question I think there's debate on both sides well, who do you the, if you had a vote ah, you had a vote who would you pick it's hard because I think I think Bobo is more addicted I yeah. mean the guy got it, it was like he was cutting out alcohol when he just quit this job I mean he so, got so you think Bobo loves I, the show I think more Bobo than is more does. physically addicted like but I think Marianne is more a tat. It's, yeah, it's hard. I guys. think of it same. Like I think Bobo, it's more, and this is going to sound negative, like a pathology, whereas Marianne is choosing to love the show. Bobo quit a job, a good paying gig. So because he couldn't listen to the show. Because he wouldn't get to the show until 9 o'clock, and he told his boss, this messes with my routines, I just can't do this. That's so, a super fan, Gary. Well, with, with Benji's thinking, if, if, if Marianne's choosing to love the show, and if with Bobo it's a pathology, then... Clearly, Bobo is the bigger fan if you're going to buy into that. One other thing that was interesting to me was Bobo actually has a work history and an employment history and all these commendations. He was with the Postal Service for 37 years. And the only time... That explains everything. He he was with the Postal (laughs) Service. He retired from there. He has a binder, like, hugely thick with all of his Employee of the Month awards, this and that. The only time he ever got in trouble at work was for listening to Howard. His his supervisors would write him up because (laughs) he would be caught in a truck when he was supposed to be working listening to Howard. But it is like the signs of alcoholism, like... Has this ever interfered with your job? You know, I, I just love like some guys are at, at work and they're doing blow in the post. <laughs> some of them are getting blow jobs, and he's just listening to Howard. <laughs> On a Tuesday's wrap-up show, we had the graffiti artist David Cho, who uh, became the multimillionaire from his uh, Facebook, the Facebook IPO, and we talked about his appearance on the show. And John Hine and I got in a big argument about. Uh, the doubling gambling method, which uh, I was shocked that John uh, thinks that that works in casinos. And uh, it mathematically works if you have an unlimited amount of money, but it, it, it uh, chances are very much so that you'll go broke if you do it in a casino. And the fact that John didn't understand that, I was shocked and pleased by it because I like feeling a little smarter than John about this. And our featured guest was artist David Cho, and we should talk a little bit about how he got here in the first place. Okay. So it started out where somebody sent an email to Howard's assistant, Laura, who forwarded it to me, but I had seen the article on the cover of the New York Times that morning, so I sort of knew the story already. Pitched it to Howard, and Howard's like, this sounds like a pretty cool story. Let's look into it. So I thought it was going to be more like a phone call. I didn't realize how big the story was. David found out that there was interest. We find out that the whole world wants him. Everybody wants him. And all he wants to do is Howard. You know, it's like a splash. Anybody here from Penthouse? And so he wants to do Howard. And, uh, and, and so people like ABC, I think, flew him in. And then there was a whole thing going on over the weekend where the ABC people were trying to get us to pick up the tab for some of it. I'm like, hey, he wants to do our show. He said he'd fly himself in for us. He was thrilled to be on the show today. So, uh, so we decided to have him in live. And then only after we decided to have him in live did Will do a little research on him and said, holy shit, this guy's going to be a great guest. We wanted him on solely for the Facebook story. We thought that would be enough. Then, you know, Will says, you know, he's in jail. He's punching himself in the face, drawing with blood. And then we found out it'd be awesome. Well, he's in jail in Japan. Right. And the whole gambling thing fascinated me. And Will, you should come down and talk about this because I know you were also fascinated by it. And then he came in with that painting. He did the artwork. That on, painting on the was wall. amazing, by the way. The one he did for Howard, yeah. I loved it. And he did the artwork on the wall in the green room, and he was a really interesting guy. But I was watching Howard sort of relate to where he was coming from, and Howard would talk a little bit about his philosophy in life. And you know, Dave's like, "Yeah, but why not live it up? You've got this, you've got right. that. Enjoy it." And he's like, "Well, one day you're not, you may not feel this way." 
Right. I was surprised because I think a lot of people liked him, and I spoke to my wife right before we came to wrap up, and I, I wondered what she would think of him because he was talking about banging broads and doing this and everything. She goes, God, that guest was so good. But the thing about him that Howard loves, I mean, the, the greatest thing you can bring to the show is to be completely unfiltered, and I think that totally describes him. There, he sat down. Howard wanted to talk about Facebook. He goes, before we talk about Facebook, let me talk about how I learned how to jerk off in a Japanese prison. Right. <laughs> he came prepared. There's no doubt about that. But the question I put to you guys is, do you take the 60 grand? Or do you take the shares in Facebook? And keep in mind, guys, nobody knew what Facebook was at this point. Most people, most people are going to take the money. He, I, you know, he doesn't seem to care about anything. Even like Will and I were talking about how he's going to go, go do ABC. And he says, well, I want Barbara Walters to interview me and I want her to do graffiti with me. And Will just said, which, which I got out of the interview, it's amazing what you can accomplish when you don't give a fuck. <laughs> like if ABC said to him, no, he goes, fine, I don't want to do it. So we, when you don't care, I think you can get a lot of stuff done. Do you respect that kind of attitude, J.D.? Yes. Yeah. I would love to be able to say, you know, fuck you. I get what I want. You know, if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. I like that. And did you know he was a big fan of yours? <laughs> he's a big fan of the show. I don't know if he's a big but fan. But he liked you because, I mean, yeah. he, had his, he likes you. He doesn't like Eric the Midget, so he's got his likes and dislikes. Yeah, well, he's a good man. He, no, I respect his opinion in that sense. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's... Uh, <laughs> His mind must go a million miles a minute. That's 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 what I was thinking. I, I, I liked him on the show, but I could tell that Howard wanted to let him be him, but it was hard to keep him on the <laughs> oh, tracks because yeah. he he could go off in a lot of directions. That's why Howard's such a great interviewer. Give him a little room, but bring him back. And he, he had some paint on his hands. I wonder if he was like out painting before he came on the show. He might be. The, the guy, well, some, he said he did, uh, I don't know, like if sometime in the last, sound like last day or two, he did that Beetlejuice thing on uh, somewhere down in Chinatown. Like he uh, he did a graffiti. It, it, actually, he said his landlord asked him to uh, like graffiti uh, a wall. Now, what about the struggle he has? Most people, you know, you're on the front page of the New York Times. You're like, wow, great. He's like, no, I don't want people really knowing about this part of my life because before this moment, he was living a pretty good life, right. completely under the radar. Mo money, mo problems. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> Give me that look all you want, John. I, I thought it was funny. Sorry. You gonna go to Vegas and uh, uh, hang out with David? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Uh, I'll teach you how to turn five hundred dollars into a million dollars. Yeah, uh, I I doubt Howard would be flying me to Vegas with him. But uh, you know, I was really curious. I don't, I don't know how much he thought out the decision. Of like sixty thousand versus versus the shares. I don't think if, he thought it out much at all. But I, w I wonder if he really took it like thinking, hey, this is gonna, you know, become this big thing. I'm gonna make so much more of it. Or if, he if we're, if he, we're he kept saying over and over he believed in Sean right. Parker. He believed eventually Sean Parker was gonna. But be I able wonder to pay if that, if that was, was his reason for keeping the shares and not taking the money. That's what, That's what I he said. He said he said he could have really used sixty grand at that time, but that he thought he thought Sean Parker was cool enough and interesting enough and smart enough that he was banking on him. But that's that's a lot of faith. Yes, absolutely. Especially, yeah. it's a lot of faith in light of the fact that Sean Parker had already been with two companies before that. And didn't pay. And it couldn't, it couldn't pay. Yeah. And, and was it like MySpace? It was around, and who knew that would be not as good as Facebook? Well, at the time, I mean, <laughs> Facebook was popular within those small colleges that, not small, but the colleges that had it, but it hadn't exploded onto, you know, the... The big, the big scene, so to speak. Uh, David in Connecticut, you're on the wrap up show. Hey guys, how are you? Good. How you doing? Hey, good. Hey, listen, guys. Uh... <laughs> Hello. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. He was uh -oh. gonna say David was lucky. <laughs> yeah, but uh, sure, there's some luck involved. But but he's done a lot of things, and it can't all be luck. Well, what about him? Although Benji did say, Benji said that. Um, that David reminded him a lot of Hurley on Lost, where just everything he touches goes right <laughs> before he, it goes wrong. Except for the success part. He actually reminds me a lot of myself. But uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> his, uh, his gambling thing, strategy, which I, it's great. It's great that it worked for him, but that doesn't work. I no. mean, it's, it's like someone saying, like, Why doesn't it work? Well, statistically, probability-wise, it, it won't work. You'll, you'll go broke trying to keep trying to keep doubling and putting money away if he had done the same he could, you could do the same thing in 24 hours that you spread over 24 uh weeks of what he, his strategy it doesn't make a difference like strategically probability wise you would always end up losing 
but he was a small percentage. It's like someone saying, hey, I'll smoke a lot of cigarettes to beat this cancer. Why? why someone it's going to work for. Well, I don't want to get into detailed math discussion here, but why would he always end up, if he walks away after he wins every time, why would he end up losing? I think Benji's saying that the winning every time is pretty much some luck, not necessarily well, a strategy. The, the, the casino had always slightly, he said it's close to 50-50, which right. it is for, for a lot of the, the games. But it's also the, the, the edges to the casino, and eventually you always lose and if you keep doubling you can't double to uh well you, have you to eventually have won't have enough money to right. double you need a certain size bankroll to do it but if you bet 100 but, but 200 not a 400 obviously it's not a guaranteed thing otherwise we could just always do it it's guaranteed if you can unlimited double that you'll eventually win Okay, but you can unlimited double. You, you know, it's funny. Just get off track for a second. John and I were in Vegas. We were uh, on couple, track. <laughs> we, John and I were in Vegas a couple of weeks ago. We were. We, John was cashing in some money that he won, and we're online, and there were these five people in front of us who had just crazy dumb luck. They had bet some crazy bet on the craps table. That's like one of those once in a lifetime bets, and. One girl who's like 25 years old had $80,000. The guy next to her had $60,000. The guy next to him had $55,000. And John and I were just in awe of this ridiculous bet that you just fucking hit. And then I ran over to the craps table and bet it because, <laughs> I mean, it's a feature bet. You got to roll you know every did? number but a seven. You went to the tree that just got hit by lightning hoping it would hit again. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> the but odds on that are incredible. Do you really think he has a system that works? Yes. It's simply, you really do? I really do. It's no, all he's doing is he... Let's say it's a it's a five dollar bet. He loses, then he doubles it to ten. Right. He loses right. It again, then he doubles it to twenty. Right. And then when he when he wins, he he says, you know what? I've won money. I'm gonna go take it to, and I'll wait till I'll wait till next week to start again. Right. It it doesn't work. It it, it could it could statistically it's gonna work at maybe I don't know a third of the uh, a a thirteenth millionth of a time, but it doesn't work. All right, we'll debate this during the break. But I'll show you how I think it works. Uh, you gotta be crazy. Are you being serious? <laughs> yes, I'm you're, being you're, serious. You're like the sm- you're supposed to be so smart. Joe, do you think? No, do you, I'm not that smart. Do you think that? Because Benji was making a point. I'm curious. Do you think that the system works because he waits a week? Rather, like no. Benji was saying, you could do the whole thing in 24 hours. I think if you have a large enough bankroll, eventually yes, it works. Yes, of course. That's, that's all I'm saying. No, Wait, no, no. Uh, but but no one does have a large enough bankroll. He does. No, he doesn't. Okay, Matt and Boston, know. you're on the wrap up show. Hey, what's up, guys? How are you? Hey, Matt. Good. Hey, I just want to say I thought that interview was was so well done by Howard. Um, I, I I think there were a lot of parallels between you know risk taking early in his career with with the same way Howard did, did his too, um, in terms of being a risk taker and you know not giving a fuck what people you know think and just doing your own thing. And I I don't think there was much thought put into taking the uh, the sixty grand. I th- I agree. I think he's very. Impulsive. I think it's like he can look at it now, but he's like, you know what? I like that dude, so I think I'm going to take the shares because I just like him. But I don't think he labored over it over a period of a week. The other part of the interview that I loved was how he decided to start charging more for his art. And basically, he said, you know, I could sell these for a thousand, but if I charge ten thousand, a hundred thousand, whatever else, it's going to appeal more to an elite group, and that's uh, has a lot to do with his success. Agreed. But I think a lot of people have that idea. I think you have to have some talent Agreed. too. Agreed. You can't, you know, you can't just start drawing shit, and going, you know, with stick figures, going, I'm going to charge five thousand dollars. Although that'd be a great social experiment. Dustin in North Carolina, you're on the wrap up show. Hey guys, I mean that was basically my question. I mean. It's- the IPO versus sixty grand is one, but to even pay sixty grand for a uh, any work, I mean, I know he's talented, Gary. You said that you love his work, but how much would you be willing to pay for that work that you just saw today? Well, yeah, again, art art is a really hard thing to put a value on, but there's two things. There's two reasons why people buy it, either just for the love of it. Or because it's a good investment, and the investment is whatever the market will bear. Somebody paid 140 million dollars for a Jackson Pollock painting. Do you think it's worth it? I, I, I know well, that, I couldn't afford it. But, but I know um, somebody bought a Van Gogh some years ago, and it had broken the record for the most that anyone ever ever paid. And people said, you're crazy, you're nuts. And, to, and like seven years later, it had doubled in price. Well, he talked about walking into a hotel lobby and looking up and saying, what is this piece of crap? And they've paid you know X amount for it, and you're like, oh, then I guess it must be good, which is the tricky part with art. I mean, is it subjective? Is it objective? I mean, I joked around, and I said, so he drew that whale thing yeah. in, 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 the, um, in the green room. And it, it's very possible, it's very valuable because he drew it, but if you didn't know he did it, and I told you that Shuli did it, then what value does it have at all? No, it's got to be valuable. Scott's over there with a rock hammer right now trying <laughs> to get the wall off. But, but I mean, it doesn't, it, it wasn't so intricate, but, but again, I always say, like, I love Keith Haring, and people always say, um, 
oh my God, that's so simple. Anybody could do it. I go, yeah, but he did it first. So that's what makes it interesting. There's also got to be a factor with private collectors anyways, where it's almost like, look what I have that you don't right. type of type of uh, feel, you know, when they go and spend this kind of money. I was thinking, how hard could it be? Because isn't Sylvester Stallone like one of the great art collectors of all time? <laughs> now, have, that says it all. <laughs> have you, JD or Benji, have you ever implemented the reverse horror trap he was talking about? What was the reverse horror trap again? I forget. Tell a girl you're a painter? Yeah. Oh, I, I, no, I, don't, no. I don't know how to draw, or I would. No, no, no. Me? Hold on. I can fix this. I haven't done it, but I know people who have been affiliated with us who have, and it's very simple. You do have the reverse horror trap thing going. I'll get you on the show. I've right. never told anyone I'll get them on the show, right. and I never implied it. But I know other people who work with the show have given people the idea that they may be able to further their career. Oh, sorry. Work Rich. on the show. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but, 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 but that they may be able to further their career or get them on or help them in some way. And it's not even people who work for the show. Look at uh, last week we had Ass Napkin Ed on with a porn star. No, I know, exactly. He's, he's gotten laid more than I have from I mean, he, the he show. He absolutely <laughs> has. What made him seem dicky was, but he would put it out there, but then not paint them. Like, why not paint them? Because he's bored. I mean, that that that's the part that seemed really kind of. Yeah, mean. He just wanted to bang him. Greg in Kentucky. But they were the looking for. Show. But they were looking for something for nothing as well. Right. Hey, Greg. Hey guys, I think they should call David Cho Prince Paul Media. Man, that's a funny fucking Korean. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't hear what he just said. <laughs> he said I, I just heard funny him. fucking Korean. Yeah, he's a funny Korean. He is funnier than him. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Greg. Uh, okay. I, I, want, I, well, I thought I, it was. I thought it was weird that like. I don't know enough about Korean relations with other cultures to know, but apparently the Japanese hate the Koreans, the blacks hate the Koreans. Well, like, there's everywhere, there's, everyone hates the Koreans, according to him. At the end of the interview, he said he wanted to be prince of all media, Kim Jong Stern, Kim Jong Stern, and Howard asked him, "Did you sell any share?" He said, "Yeah," and then, but he didn't want to reveal how much of the stock. He sold. It was interesting. It was the one thing he wasn't willing to talk about in the whole interview. I wonder, talked about jerk it off, and we banged and everything else. Let's talk to Jack in Atlantic City. Jack, you're on the wrap up show. Hey, what's up, guys? Hey, Jack. Hey, um, that system, you know, it'll work sometimes, but in general, it, 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 I used to be a dealer. It doesn't work. If you start with twenty five dollars to keep doubling it, and if you lose six times in a row, you're putting up a thousand dollars just to win back your money plus the twenty five dollars. You only win twenty five dollars, and you're up to a thousand, putting a thousand dollars down. Right, but, but if the uh, but if the guy's but, betting twenty five hundred or twenty five thousand, you know, if he's got a big enough yeah, bankroll, you, he can walk away with a little keep, bit of profit. But you can't keep. There's a limit, and the limit right. is about fifty thousand dollars, unless you're an extremely high roller. And even then, I mean, I've seen guys lose thirteen times in a row. For, you know, it doesn't happen that often, but you can't <laughs> over a long period of time. You can't win. Jack, how long have you been dealing uh, cards? Well, I used that for 10 years. I used it. I don't know. Okay. How many systems have you seen that work? None. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, the card counters. And then, right. You know, but that, but that's, a that's, a, that's a matter of time, too. That's a matter of time, too, before they get caught. Like, like you know, uh, 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 Bill Maher had a great line about airport security. He says, get the casinos to run airport security. You can't even do math in your head and, and not get caught in the casino, <laughs> right. you know? I mean, somebody said once, you know, there's a reason that those hotels look awfully nice in Vegas. You built them, you know, and, and I get that. You know, you're eventually going to lose. My point was, if you go with a big enough unit, you can walk away with something. The whole trick is to get you to think you have a shot. That's the trick. There was a hotel where the, the stratosphere is now in Vegas. It used to be Vegas World, right? They had a blackjack table that both the dealer's cards were face up. So you see the dealer's right. hand right from the start. <laughs> but if, if there was a push, then you lose. So if you got a 20 and you see the dealer's got a 20, you got a hit because right. you're going to lose anyway. And that's a mind fuck. Well, Same with the single deck blackjack. I, I'll tell you, seeing that 25-year-old girl in Vegas holding $80,000 was enough to make me want to go drain my bank account because it's, it's possible. Gary, I had a friend of mine who was a dealer. He was a craps dealer. He won thirty grand one night in craps. He comes to work the next day, and I'm standing at a dead blackjack game at the Barbary Coast. It's 3 a.m. I got hookers and cab drivers, and he comes up, and he goes, just quit. And I said, what do you mean you just quit? He goes, becoming a professional gambler. And that was the last time I ever saw or heard anything about this guy. <laughs> never saw or heard anything well, about I, him. I wonder if, like David Cho, he's got a suite in every hotel in, in Vegas where he's living. I mean, the guy, he's a high roller. I mean, the classic story from the show, which we finally did end up telling on the air, was I will never forget the day Casey came to me. That's and he said, we need to go in the back room and talk. <laughs> I hit a royal flush on goldenpalace.com. How much? Was it three hundred forty? Over three hundred. Over three hundred thousand dollars. And he goes, "You know what? I'm going to pay off my bills, and I'm going to buy an apartment." And I was like, "You know, great." You know, it really. He was so happy, and it was like turn around. And three months later, 
He talked about how he couldn't pay his bills. I go, what happened to that money? He goes, oh, that's gone already. Oh. And I said to him, how could that be gone? And he said he started playing blackjack online because they don't send you the 350 grand. Oh, no, you have it on account. You have it on account. They send you X amount per, you know, per month or whatever. He was going to get $6,000 a month for like five years or so, I, whatever it was, some crazy amount of time. And in three months, it was gone. It's all about the thrill. It's all about the And gambling. I guarantee you it was gone long before three months. Like I, I guarantee said to, you I, he went on a bender for like he a was week. Doing the po- he was doing the blackjack thing. I, I would lose, and I would double up, and then I would double up again because the odds are with me, and it's just, oh, it's so ugly. You yeah. barely have a shot at a real blackjack table. Video blackjack? You might as well just yeah, fucking throw money out the window. Who's monitoring them? Yeah, exactly. What commission is looking at them? That's the worst. And, Benji, you said you identified with David? Yeah, I just, I, I did. I thought he reminded, the way his mind works reminded me a lot of me. I, the way I, I, my mind goes a lot of different places. He just, I don't know. The things that people get annoyed about me, I think, were there about him. Um, he successfully did it. One, his story is fascinating, um, and the way you know he got to the good parts. Maybe I just never get to the good parts. Do you value like freedom? He said. Oh like, yeah, yeah. That's my biggest. <laughs> that's definitely like always my like thing. Have you ever been incarcerated for anything? Yeah. And what, did it make you crazy? <laughs> well, I was only for like like uh, uh, once for the uh, or at least once for the show. Like uh, one of the uh, uh, when I interrupted a reporter. Right. I got. I was in jail for a couple of hours, but it's so they put me in a. They you know they cuffed me and they put me in a cop car. Then they put me in a cell, and it's very. I mean, I knew chances are I was going to get out, but that feeling is just to right. think about that is just so horrible. And what about his struggle of trying to keep your life private? Yet you know it's so difficult now with the Facebook thing that's happening. Yeah, it's done. He said that Sean told him you know that's the one thing you're never going to get back is your privacy. He. I mean, he may be able to fly under the radar if nothing else happens for a couple of years, but right now. He's at the top. Like everybody knows who he is. Everybody wants him, and that I love. I love you know, just human nature. That that girl texted him. She's like, "If you give me two million, <laughs> I'll blow you every day and night." Which is crazy because, like, he well, she said, two, like in a year. I mean, you could do the same thing for like hundred hundred thousand. If, if he lives to be seventy, she'll be she, you know it'll be like a dollar a blowjob. Yeah, who's calling that broad over? At I also 70. like I like how he had the tissues out when all the press was trying to get in touch with him, <laughs> and he uh, he couldn't uh, go to the door. On Wednesday's wrap-up show, all we talked about was Scott the Engineer. What's going on with his intern? Does she feel comfortable in there? Why is he so mad at Steve Brandano? And is he playing his son's band's music? Scott says no, he doesn't have a master plan, yet detailed all the stuff he planned out. So we tried to get into that enigma, otherwise known as Scott Sale. Apparently there's some issues in Scott Salem's studio with his intern, with why he has an intern, with Steve Brandano, and I know other people were talking about uh, what music's being played in there, so we'll see if anybody wants to come in here and speak their mind. It's an open forum here on the wrap-up show. Sal- o- open forums that were got us in this trouble. Yes. This was the first time in a long time I felt we got angry Scott, at least mm-hmm. at the beginning when he first got in. He was fired up. And, Gary, I wonder if it's one of those things where if there's smoke, there's fire, or what do you think got under his skin so much? Was it his son? Like I couldn't figure that out. I think that Scott feels that if an intern is in there, if he's going to have an intern, he's going to show them what to do and show them the ropes and everything, that there's a sort of an unspoken rule, don't stab me in the back. But there is some weirdness going on because it seems every intern Scott's had for like the last few years has done this to him. Do you think it's because... It gets noticed on the show, and then they get involved somehow, or is it because that's just the way Scott is? I don't know. Like, I wonder if, like, I haven't taken too much shit on the intern show, and I don't know that you have, and I don't know whether it's because you're a good guy or whether because people are afraid to fuck with me, and or but that brings around to the point, maybe people just aren't afraid to fuck with Scott. That could be part of it. I, I, think, I think Scott is, like, seen, listen, I, I think, uh, Fia? Yeah. Fia. I like a lot. She's one of the interns I've gotten to know in a little bit this semester. I like her a lot. I think she was being sincere. But I also think, I don't know if in this case, but I think in a lot of cases, Scott's like a safe target. Yeah, and but I think it was a sincere observation. I, I, I do too. But I also think, like, uh, Gary, I think if an intern made a sincere observation about you. They didn't. I was really pissed, but yeah, I let it be. And you might you might handle it in a smarter way. Right. But I think you'd be really, really angry about it. I would be. I, I had, um, do you, I still talk about the intern who wrote a poem about me and read it on the, <laughs> the intern about my Adidas jacket, about how, how I'm old and how I wear it every day. And, and I was just sort of like, who are you? But, but I was pissed about it, but then I let it be. I, I also think Scott might have been pissed because what happens here a lot is you do something 
and then everyone decides this is the reason you're doing it. Oh, he's doing it to get attention no, for his but, son's but Benji, band. see, you, this, is, this is part of the, a smoke screen that you put up a lot. When you do something, sometimes it is what it is. You're trying to say, oh, it, doesn't, it no, always it, doesn't look the way it is, but sometimes it is but, exactly but was, what it looks let's like. Let's say he was playing his son's music. Often. Early. Often. But maybe, he, maybe he, like he said, he's really listening to it and working on it at the same time that he's doing right, but, we're, but that's what we're doing. We're here, what we're doing here is work for the show. Right, but you guys are saying he's doing it to get attention for his son's music. Either way, he's wrong. Either he's getting attention for his son or he's working on his son's music here when he should be working on stuff for us. And either way, it doesn't work. Well, he said, he said when she was talking about that he was doing it 4.30 in the morning while he'd listen to something while he's pulling uh, clips off the internet and it doesn't have to listen to them audio-wise. The other thing that struck me during this whole thing when you were in there, John Lieberman, was Scott saying, well, just get me coffee. Like, that whole attitude. No, his no, son, no, said, son, yeah. his son yeah. said that. His son allegedly yeah. said it, I guess. I don't know if Scott has, has said that was his son who did that. No, I interviewed his son, and that's how much this escalated. Scott came to me and said, look, my son is so pissed, he wants to speak out. So to a reporter, that's like... Awesome, great. So I got him on the phone right away, and his son was very angry at the intern, both for her comments about what Scott was doing in his studio and also about her critique of his music. See, the second one is an opinion, so you, you, it's hard to be mad at an opinion. Somebody says, I think you suck. You're like, yeah, okay, I, I don't think I suck. The first one is more interesting because how much does Scott's son know what he does here, what he's supposed to be doing and not doing? And that's a very interesting, and I did ask him about that as well, and he admitted, he said, yeah, my dad listens to my music a lot, critiques it, so to me it reinforced that Scott was indeed listening to the music in his studio. John, so my, you, wait, wait, my question is, why can't you, like, I know Scott has about the same commute that I have, which is about 45 minutes to an hour each way, so why can't you critique it in the car? Well, that's a very valid point. I mean, that is a valid point. What struck me today was Scott backed off a little. He came to me and said, look, I was really just baiting Brandano, meaning that he was playing the music when Brandano walked by just to goad Brandano into his reaction to get some airtime. But then when I pressed him about it, Scott, he said, no, I wasn't really baiting him. So it's sort of his story is now all over the place, which he tends to do a lot. Well, that's right. my question. Is this part of a master plan? On Scott's behalf, where he's doing all this solely to get the attention for his son's band, and does he want him to be on America's Got Talent? Is there some sort of ulterior motive going on here that we're not aware of? I think yes and no. I don't think that Scott is, I don't want to say not smart enough, but I don't think that he is enough steps ahead to craft this master plan. I do think, however, that he plays the music sometimes to get a certain reaction. I don't believe that he was baiting Steve. I think he was actually playing the music right. so that somebody would say, oh, what is that? And then it comes up on the air. So I think he wanted it to come up on the air. Now it has. So he has, in a sense, won because he wanted it. And look, I was part of it. I interviewed his son. To me, it's a good news story, the fact that his son is going after the intern. But I think the fact that it wouldn't be, you know, hey, that's, that might be, we know Scott likes his, his son's band and wants his son to do well. Other than knowing that, that that's human nature to want you know him to do well, do you have any proof that that's why he was doing it? Proof that Scott was doing it to get attention for it? Yeah. No, but that wasn't what our piece was. Our piece was that Steve Brandano walked by... And he heard the music all of a sudden, and Steve, and the and based on what the intern had already said, the intern who has intimate knowledge of what goes on in that studio, because she's there hours at a time, you know, putting two and two together, it's clear that Scott, in some way, shape, or form, wanted attention to it. Why else would you play it that loud and not through your headphones? Steve, of all the things that Scott was angry at, it seemed like you were really the one he was pissed at. Like, he was firing off on you. He called you a bunch of names. Yeah, I, know, I noticed that as well. Um, the, just the weird thing for me, and it goes back to something Benji said at the beginning, like, is Scott an easy target? Like, for the intern show... There's been way worse things said about Benji on this intern show than, oh, an than anything. Too. Well, but my point is, Rafia reporting that Scott's been playing the music and not saying that it's his son's band. She thinks it is. That's an interesting thing for us to talk about on the intern show. Sure. Now, yes, she did say, it's not for me. It sounds like Creed, and that's not for me. So that is putting him down, I guess. But if, if this kind of a conversation gets that reaction from Scott, 
One, I don't think that's a shot at him as an easy target. And then I don't know what I'm supposed to talk I, about I, on the First of all, I think show. it was good. It was good radio. It was interesting. I'm saying, I'm not saying, I, I, again, I think Fia, I love her. I think she's funny. She's a great storyteller, the way she, way she uh, told the story. And I thought, I thought it was all legitimate. I'm saying like a general thing over the years, Scott gets picked on more, much more than average by, okay, by well, everyone from interns if on If he's going to start calling me a twerp and, and ignoring and giving his intern the cold shoulder over this and not those things, I think that's weird. I mean, I, mean, I, I just don't see why all of a sudden well, I'm a twerp and, and he's not talking to his intern he, he, about this thing. And Benji, I think it's more what, of an explosion from over the years. But with what you've said, a lot of those things have happened with Scott. Like you're saying, well, why is Scott always picked on? Yeah, correct if I'm wrong, Gary, but these incidents did happen. Well, right, right. In other words, it, it isn't like somebody made this up. Like, I joked around today, I was talking to the news, and I say, you know Evan, who works for us? Evan's one of our engineers. Evan, how long have you been working for us? And he goes, six years. I go, how come everybody comes? To, nobody ever comes to me behind your back to tell me something goofy that you're doing? He goes, because I'm not doing anything goofy. I said, there's your answer. The oh. other question there, Gary, was that brought up was, does Scott need an intern and what does Scott's intern do? And Fia said, what'd she say? I get to the stuff that Scott can't I forgot what no, how there, she it's a great it. word. What was the word she used? Um uh not that he can't reach or something along no, those it was, lines. No, it was a it was I, I, no, I, no, she said a plus play a plus record, but she goes uh, the things that are inconvenient for That's him to the do. word. She <laughs> said the things that are inconvenient for him. I don't think Scott should have an intern for a very simple reason. The last four or five seem to have annoyed the shit That's out of him. That's not true. One of them is he has a full time <laughs> job here. Ryan, who was right, a few but that was ago. a wit- right, okay. Ryan was the first semester of Sirius. <laughs> yes, no, no, no. There's another Ryan. Oh, okay, another Ryan. But uh, of your last six interns, Ryan O'Connell was not your intern. No, there's another Ryan. I forgot his last name. <laughs> so Ryan Rasmason and Ryan. Uh, of your last say Ryan Fuller, six yeah, interns, Fuller. other than the ones named Ryan. So he was seven <laughs> semesters ago. No, he was not. He was like two semesters ago. All right, so, let's not get bogged down. Not true. Of your okay. last six to eight interns, how many of them would you say have been re- really made your life easier, and you were happy, happy to have them? Rose. Six out of eight were were fine. That's. Well, Six out of eight. My last one Scott, wait, wait, wasn't good. Your last wait, wait. one was doing the same thing. Steve, I can't be on the intern show because I because Scott doesn't because Scott doesn't talk to me anymore. So that's two people in the last two semesters that have said it to me. If we want to go back just that far, because Rafia said it to me earlier this week and he said it to me last time. Last I, I don't I don't threaten any intern to say anything I mean, or not to say anything. So why do you think Rafia feels that she can't do the intern show anymore? I don't know. I never, I never told her that she couldn't say anything that she didn't want to say. You know, Did you tell her that you were mad at her? No. Was there a level of uncomfort, uncomfortability right. in your studio? Yes. I would, I'm going to tell you <laughs> the definition of uncomfortability today. This is more of a visual thing, and I hope they show this on TV. And they can't even, because you need a wider shot to get this. While Howard's playing the clip of Rafia, you know, goofing on Scott... Scott's sitting in his chair in his studio. Rafia sitting right across from him. There's a camera on Scott and a camera on Rafia. And then John is in there with a microphone trying to get any ambient sound that he could get. And everyone's just silent watching these two with cameras on. It's so uncomfortable. Well, how do you address that issue, Scott? I mean, if it's uncomfortable in there, isn't it your responsibility as the guy who works here to make it comfortable? I, I made it fine. She, she said yesterday she... Apologize, apologize for what she said. It didn't come out right. I never said that she did, couldn't say it. But did you, were you and I accepted the apology. I said, fine. All right, let's would, move Did on. you give her the, the silent treatment for any period of time? I didn't give her a silent treatment. I mean, you know, she asked me some stuff um, yesterday. And were you well, mad at her yesterday? I, I wasn't mad. I'm just annoyed. I mean, you know, you know I'm not pleased. That when I approached you with it after the intern show, approached you with the story, you were upset. I mean, it's fine. You could. You, yeah, I was you know. upset. I just said that. I was upset. I wasn't mad, mad. I, I, I just didn't agree with her throwing me under the bus or throwing my son under the bus. She, she had no knowledge of my son's music other than the literally 10 seconds that she heard of it. Do you so, feel like you were betrayed in some way? Well, yeah. I mean, you know, I'm trying to teach her shit, and she's trashing the shit out of me and my son. So, yeah, there, there is a little, you know, betrayal right there. What did she tra- say? <laughs> yeah, she did she's not, not trash you. you and what you're teaching her. Well, and tattling on what I'm doing or whether I'm doing something wrong or what well, I should. If you're not doing anything wrong, then it's not tattling. Well, and, and if you had just said to her, 
yeah, this is my son's music, or this is something I'm pulling for Fred, that ends it. What was weird is that you wouldn't tell her, and that starts a conspiracy, <laughs> okay. and that's something that we want to talk about on the internship. Well, today, when it came up, Steve's right. You said you didn't want to tell her because you knew it would turn into something like this. Yeah, because, yeah, because if I say I'm playing my son's music, then I get yelled at, you shouldn't be playing your son's music. But I, I, no, you I can't... play your son's music all the time. No, the I don't. You, no. you have. We've talked about it before with other interns. I, I haven't done it in... I didn't say all the time or during work, I, I but you play your it, son's music. I did when it was new four years right. ago when he had new stuff. So, right. so that wouldn't have got you in any trouble. And it would have stopped the story. And we wouldn't be here right now. Wait, but do you think Scott is being outrageous to say, sometimes saying an innocent thing No, but Benji, it's like when here. we talk to you, if we ask you a question and you don't answer I play then, Scott's music. Then stuff, then stuff gets dragged Sunday. out and becomes a story. If you answer but it, it doesn't. That's why it's a story seven years later that you turned 40 when we got here. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but, but Scott, are you saying that the only time... The only time you play your son's band's music was that 10 seconds for her, and you don't play it at all other than that? I, I play it on my own time, yeah, sure. <laughs> what do you mean by your own time? My own time. When she's in there. Yeah. Your coffee breaks. There, coffee breaks, or before 4 or afternoon, or you know, whatever. He gets in at 3.45 to play the music yeah, till 4. And exactly. are you playing it so someone hears it and brings Absolutely it up not. If air? I want to play it, and if I'm working on it, which I'm, I wasn't working on it, um, what, what does working on it mean? Yeah, if that's I'm, what if yeah. I'm mixing it or trying to help them out, you know, I was not doing any of that. Okay, I was listening for <laughs> critique that he asked me for. Were you baiting Steve Brandano? I that's really all I wanted. I wasn't baiting him. Then why I, did you say that? I, he because he assumed I was playing my son's music. I, I got a question. You wouldn't I, answer the question, and you said it today. When, I did assume you walked you by. I yeah. was playing my son's music. You yeah. just said it on the uh, a few minutes yeah. ago. Yeah. I wasn't playing my song. All right, music. I didn't know that, it wasn't, Scott. Well, but when exactly. Rafia says it, that's, but when you Rafia didn't says know that, so air. you don't comment on Scott, it. Scott, Because you don't know what you're talking about. Scott, when Rafia says it on Don't comment on shit that air. you don't know what you're talking about. I have that's to. That's all. That's well, why I'm don't mad. get my intern so they don't feel comfortable coming on my show. I didn't say anything to her. When Rafia f floats that theory, and then John and JD and I go to lunch, and there's no music playing, and I walk by, and then I hear the music. Based on that knowledge, I can only assume that it's your son's band. And that's all that we did. Well, if you're going to critique your son's music, like I said earlier, you have yeah. this great community. No, I, I, I get it. We're in the car. I, I, like, I, I love listening to work stuff in the car because I'm completely and, alone. And I do that. Um, I was just... Something came into my head. I wanted to check and, to listen to something again. Yeah. So while I was really, I'm not wasting my time doing shit I shouldn't be doing. I'm and just not trying to figure out whether you're playing not, it or and not. Work. The, I, I was. Let's playing clear it up, I, though. I said Look, I was playing. There's it. two different issues. Number one, you were playing it when Rafia was in there. That's correct. Right. Never, uh, never. So again. Steve based his assumption, knowing the information that you were indeed playing it with Rafia in there. Right. So his assumption, you're saying, was wrong. His assumption was, if any music's playing, it must be my son's music. That's what and he, that's it, what you wanted me to think no, when I walked by and you played. No, it. I, I was just playing. Well, I wasn't playing music earlier. specifically because you walked by. It that's was, what you told you me. Did say, you did tell me. But I this is. I was trying to go somewhere where that didn't work regardless, out. Regardless, the last were you trying to I don't know what I was trying to do. Wait, wait, wait. Where were you trying to go? I don't know what I was trying to do. Yes, you do. I was trying to be smarter than I am. No, no. Were you trying to like pull one over on? I wasn't trying to pull over one. No, I was playing music that I was actually working on for the show, and he happened to walk by. The, so, were you hoping that he would think it was your son's band and it would turn hoping. into all this? I knew he would. I knew he would think it was my. So son's he band. fell into your trap. Then. Good. No, and then what no did trap. you think from there? No trap. After he walked by, I said he's going to think that was my son's band. And then what's the next step? What were you then hoping? He. I thinks, wasn't hoping anything. Well, you just said you were. You said he's going to think it's my son's music, and then what? But what's I didn't the next do thought? Anything to right. to. No, I'm just asking you. Then what's then the next thought? It's going to come gonna, out that he's going to say that. Right. He thinks I was playing my son's music. So your son's band then ends up on the show. But that me. wasn't done purposely. That music was playing because I was working on something. I'm just asking your mindset. That's There's all. no mindset. <laughs> you say that again. You're yeah. a fucking <laughs> evil genius. The, the last, I just want to point out, the last few times, from my, <laughs> from my recollection, that Scott has been on the Howard Stern show, they came off of news stories that Scott planted and then denied later. The, that's no planting. Just what There's this no planting. Is. Yes, oh, I wasn't really going to bowl then, but I knew you guys would talk. 
talk about it. Oh, I don't really want my Howard to get my son on AGT, but I knew you guys would talk about it. Those are the last times I remember you being in the studio, and this seems to be just like that. I, I have no master plan or plant stories or anything like that. I just throw shit out, and you know, sometimes I like to see. There's no master plan. Sometimes I like to see people scurry because I know that if Jason's ear hears something, he's going to go running. The, the the best person to do that with was Stuttering John. If you want, if you wanted to get something on the air, if you wanted, you know, John to run into Howard, you just put something in, in John's ear and make him think that he overheard something that he shouldn't have heard, and he would just go running into Howard like. <laughs> Do you know what <laughs> Scott did? So that that was fun. So maybe sometimes I throw that out. And you don't think that's screwing over Howard in any way? No, it's funny. To who? <laughs> to everybody. To you. Okay. Well, yeah, I think it's very similar to the Steve Lankford prank. Okay. I mean, I I, didn't, I don't run in. John runs in. No, or, right. You make John or me run. I don't in make anybody for something do anything that you knew. Would get attention. I don't make anybody do anything. See, I don't know if I would call that a master plan, Scott. There's but no it is a plan. But you no, are sort of play, yeah, working no, the chessboard I don't board do that there. anymore. I said I did it with you John. You said he was, you did it to me right now. No, you I said didn't. I knew he would go to Gary. or I, I bet this whole thing was coming. planned, no, too. No, no. After it happened, I didn't plan it pre, pre-plan. It was after you so heard. So you didn't stop it. After I saw you walk by and you, I was playing music. Right. And people looked in and they heard music. I said to myself... I bet you this comes back to bite me in the ass okay, gotcha. because I, I was playing music and it's going to be assumed that I was playing my son's music. Here's what I'm getting because at. Because that's what happened. This is my opinion. Scott is desperately trying to back an alibi into a crime. <laughs> no, exactly. I, I'm he's not doing improv. Believe me, when I, wanna hit, when, I wanna, when I wanna put my son's music, get it no, no, you know, noticed, I'll do that intentionally. My son's music isn't ready to be, his new music isn't ready to be noticed. I know, are you going to do it for you? You know how I know it's not ready? He hasn't mentioned the name of the band once. <laughs> so this was a well, p- I think so this was a, now. So this was a post plan, not a pre plan. Yeah, there's no plan. I have no plan. But what All made right, you well, so uh, angry? Well, I mean, you you really were right. angrier than I've seen you. I've only been here six months, but angrier than other stories that I thought would have angered you more. Um, I, I just felt I was stabbed in the back. Oh, that's a good point too. You know, I never brought this to Gary until. I walked by on, on Monday and heard the music from Scott's, or maybe it was even last... No, I guess it was Monday. But I didn't even bring it to Gary. I didn't bring it to Gary until I heard Lieberman talking to Rafia about how Scott was mad at her and about how she felt uncomfortable, and I got emails from her saying I'm uncomfortable, and then I said, well, fuck it. If she's going to be uncomfortable, let's get this on the air. But I didn't even bring it to, to Gary until that point. That is true. No, I know that. Was yeah. that part of the plan? So again, you yes. could have... <laughs> that was part... I made him bring it to Howard. See, I thought you were... Gary. I thought you were really upset because your son was brought into the equation and well, yeah, insulted, I don't like, and I, that's was, what got your back He up. was totally trashed. I mean, he wasn't just like... Well, I don't, she she, she said, didn't say, I don't just like the music. I mean, she went on... She said, it sounds dated. Well, it sounds it's, dated to her. He sounds like but, a 15-year-old I mean, how many, and, and... She compared it to Creed. But she's, how many African-American lesbians do you see at a Creed <laughs> concert? It's not her kind of music. She's heard 10 seconds of it. That's another... She doesn't... He's in this industry. He's in this industry where criticism He's gonna is going to be gonna criticized. Come. Right. So, but, but you know, you can't. Uh, the girl you can't fight. Everyone's but you don't criticism. expect it from the one person that heard it. Is you, what she's you're saying. working with me, and I'm trying to teach her stuff, and I'm trying to be, you know, <laughs> nice. And, I get. And I, I got to like tell you, I, 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 I'm all over the place <laughs> with this, but I get a little bit of what Scott's saying. If you're going to let somebody into your studio, right? It's it's your office, and right. so. There well, you are, is there are some... in your office. Gary, yeah. you, you had you an intern sitting interns. in your office, and you were playing, let's say, I know this wouldn't happen, solitaire. Right. Um, and, and, no, that and, didn't happen by a person. That happened by a person who works here. Or, or, you, fell, <laughs> or you fell asleep. And, and the intern... No, went, that's what I'm saying. I get it. The and, that was, went, those, and those weren't interns. The intern went running to Howard or your boss or made sure that everybody knew what was going on. That maybe you, you weren't mean supposed said to... it on the intern show. No, no, yeah, okay. That's all Rafia did uh, okay, was say, said it, but, uh, say it on the intern, which show. is on the air, which right. you know, which again you know, she wouldn't have if you had just said yes, it's my son's band. But the fact well, that I don't you know about didn't that. tell her, no, that. I don't know about that. Okay. I, I mean, if I said it was my son's band, she people have said stuff she, about Gary on the intern show she, plenty of times before, and he still but continues I have a to right, talk. She to had a right to say it, and I didn't say that she couldn't say it. But I have a right to be upset more than more than you know. All right, we're moving on. Would you rather? Although I do have to say, so I can't have Scott's interns on the intern show anymore. Yes, you can. You absolutely can. Who said you can? You absolutely can. I don't know. Well, if it's going to make it awkward with you, I would rather that their his awkwardness is not your concern. Don't worry about me. Okay. 
I'll no, handle, no, I, no you know, the intern's awkwardness is my concern. Well, I don't like when the interns come on and we tell them there will be no problem if you are within reason of the things you talk about on the intern show, and then there is a problem. Them, that is my problem, and that is what Rafia is in right now. So her, yes, Scott, it is. Be strong, problem. be brave. Her day will come. <laughs> 